is the world famous K Rock. Hell yeah, welcome to a hungover Monday morning here, the world famous K Rock. If you are enjoying your St. Patty's Day festivities, Ali, is it true your wife went to a bar by herself? That is true. Wow. I did meet up with her later, but she went by herself. That is that is really commitment to the drinking. But do you think that it's not weird because it was a holiday? Or is no. that weird in any weird. scenario? It is <laughs> weird. Like, was she going by herself to meet people? Or she just said, I'm going to walk in by myself into a bar? There were people that were going to be there later. But she didn't want to miss out on the... St. Patrick's yeah. Day is very big in her family. Her dad's Irish, so it's like a whole thing. And it's also the day before she was adopted. So she has she has two birthdays. Got it. And this is sort of, so it's like a, kind of a bigger deal. And she always wants to be in the environment, right? Yeah, she did but, a 23 and me, and she found out that alcoholism runs in her family. So <laughs> yeah. she... Yeah. It finds it very important to get to bars by it's, herself it's or about with people. Commitment. Exactly. Right. So she was like, "Well, I want to be around. I, I don't want you know to go too full, and I have to make sure that we get a place to sit and all this stuff." And I was like, "I'm not rushing over to the bar, you know. Like this is crazy." She spent all day getting ready, and she was like, "Well, I think I'm just gonna go." That's <laughs> great. Like, what time was this? It was noon. at like noon. Yeah. It was. <laughs> really? Oh, really? Yeah. I was joking. Seriously? That's amazing. Yeah. Good for her. She, and wife's ha- she has a problem. She does. <laughs> she has a problem, <laughs> Allie. Well, she said, I feel a little weird going to a bar by myself. She should. And I was, I just didn't say anything because I'm like, what do you want me to say to that? Like, and it's not her like neighborhood bar. She's not a regular there. Nothing like no, that. No, it's an Irish bar that the last time we went there was last St. Patrick's Day. You wow. think uh, she felt like she earned, po- like, because you were out on Friday night, uh, we were up on top of Absolutely. a big bear. She's like, I'm owed one, so I'm just going to leave and... and- well, she told me, because I was like, I'm going up to Big Bear, da, 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 and she said, I just want to go out on Sunday. That's all I want is to be able to go out on Sunday for St. Patrick's Day. I said, no problem. And, you know, doing it with a kid, it's all very different, right? Celebrating St. Patrick's Day. the kid again Day. to the bear? The, to the, the bar? bar? The kid was definitely there. No, this, I'm drunk right this now. This was a very family <laughs> Oriented, they had like you know Irish dancers, and there's like yeah, it's a bar, and there's well, it's a brewery. You mean those are strippers. They had shoes on. All right, there okay. you go. <laughs> Everyone's right. But of course, by the time I got there, she had a crowd of people around her and had made a bunch of friends. Your wife is and- amazing, that yeah, way. I know. Insane. I'm like, if anyone can go to a bar by yourself, it's you. Like, we got uh, listen. Not only will we celebrate Allie's wife's alcoholism on today's <laughs> show, we got all sorts of things for you. We got to give away this trip. Uh, speaking of St. Patty's Day, the fun and festivities continue because today someone's going to win that trip to go to Dublin, Ireland, and see Green Day. We'll be giving that away in less than an hour if you're on that standby list. Hope you're up now. Hope you're listening. Hope your phone is charged up and ready to take our call. Also, going to announce where you'll be going to next. It is a new destination, a new K Rock band, and uh, we got that. Those de- details coming up for you just about seven o'clock this morning. Right here, recovering from what was a very full weekend, and a lot of, uh, if you uh, were up there on top of Big Bear, thanks for coming to hang out. You know, it's funny, there's a lot of warnings on the drive up, like, uh, get your chains out, blizzard conditions, this and that, and some people I thought were going to bail, but that was a packed house, and we'll break down all that happened there, the good, the bad, the ugly. It's all coming up this morning right here on K-Rock. Klein Alley Show. Daryl Q. K-Rock. Klein Alley Show. show. Monday morning. Nice to meet you. I'm Klein. There's Ali. You got Jake the Nerd over there, DJ Omar Khan, Postmaster Johnny, who saw snow for the first time and survived, and now he's a big fan. He says he wants to be a mountain man. He had so much fun up in the snow, he said, I think I could live up here full yeah. time. he FaceTimed us on the drive up, and he was like, this is not scary. This is awesome. Yeah. Uh, and we he all FaceTimed knew us, and we didn't pick up. He did FaceTime our car a few times, and we kept ignoring. But, oh, but, come know. on. He was excited. He couldn't believe that there was snow on the trees, Klein. I think he realized there there was, like, snow everywhere yeah. and not just snow on the ground. Blew his mind. He also got beaten by some children in a snowball fight, which was embarrassing for all parties involved, especially <laughs> the children. Um, Allie, we couldn't answer his call because I was having a riveting two-and-a-half-hour drive with Jake the Nerd, and I've recorded quite a bit of it because I felt like I shouldn't suffer alone. Oh, great. So Omar, we to- Omar told me as we were leaving on Friday, he said, whatever you do, just try to record. You know, Jake is going to talk about a bunch of boring stuff. Yep. It's not please, boring. Please record. And Jake, Jake tends to go on these monologues. Like, oh, all you have to do is God. go, uh-huh. Uh, 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 he'll just keep man. talking. Allie, he will I, just keep talking, and he'll keep bringing up stuff like you have responded in the way that he wanted you to. <laughs> yeah, if yeah. I get a word like, in edgewise of Klein, besides when he's bitching about his mileage, I, I swear, he did that the whole ride up. I, I, really? have, I have so much audio. I have so much audio of Jake 
going in these one-way conversations where I'm just sitting there going, please let this ride end, and Jake's going into these theories about... It takes money to have all those lights. This is one of his many theories. He has these theories that are uncooked theories, and they're so stupid and boring. And listen, this one is about taco trucks, Ali, specifically. Oh, it sounds he, like somebody I know, by the listen way. Listen to this. <laughs> it takes money to have all those lights. <laughs> what? Like, yeah, you gotta be... If you have, like, a ton of lights, like, crazy lights on your taco truck or your setup... You have to be have pretty good tacos because you have to be doing like a lot of business because it takes money to have all those lights. Oh, my God. So one of his theories theory. as we drove by a taco truck with lights on it is that it must be good. <laughs> I'm because, glad I saw that because, because I've been thinking about this. Because the You're more like, lights no. the, the taco truck has, the better the tacos because lights <laughs> cost light money. Because they have light money. So they must be good. So it's like Vegas, right? Like the brighter, the brighter lights, the better the taco. That's what I think. Well. <laughs> The best part is that he's laughing at his own his conversation own that he's making. Well, it's because of Klein's face. He's looking at me like I'm a crazy person. No, oh, yeah, I well, see. Well, this was like a, this was like two hours in. I mean, I'll give you. Omar's heard most of it because I sent. I was sending Omar the, the, the clips in real time. Yeah, and I'm just shaking my head like, whoa. It is crazy. Uh, Dude, I wish you had been in the car with me. Vanessa was the best passenger, and she gave me her life story, and it was not boring in any way, shape, or oh, form. I believe that. <laughs> Yeah. My God, best yeah. passenger award goes to Vanessa. Yeah, next road trip we do, I, I call dibs on oh, Vanessa. Oh, that two and a half hours flew by. I was like, and then what? And then How what? many people has she killed? I can't. <laughs> I'm not going to break our bond, our sisterly okay. bond, was our big bear was, bond. Was death involved in it, though? Vanessa? Yeah, there was death. Yeah, there's death. <laughs> That's awesome. There's death and there's a jungle. Uh, Allie, while you're having Man. fun with Vanessa talking about death and jungles, this is what I'm getting. It used to be based on this band, a band called Hagfish. Oh, my God. Their album is 29 minutes long. This is all the songs are quick punk rock songs. Is that your car trying to rising. kill itself? I, I, I'm not even <laughs> saying anything, because I just think to myself, if I say nothing, he'll stop talking. But he just keeps going with more facts about Hagfish. It's a good band. Their guitarist plays in Rise Against Now. Hagfish. What? Uh, yeah, like, a uh, hit. Probably was on K-Rock. It was on the end in Seattle. Uh-huh. Uh, Anyone know them? Yeah. <laughs> You're trying so hard I, I, to make any I, I conversation. I just have nothing. I, I have, like, so uh-huh, nothing. And yeah. question? Meanwhile, I can tell. Allie's car's got stuff going on. Johnny's going nuts. I mean, I got the worst car situation. You really we did. We had a good time. Radio bros. I got a whole... <laughs> I, I wrote down all the stuff that happened with Jake, including when I went to get him. He wasn't ready. I had to pick him up at his own house. Dude, I didn't even realize how complex that setup it was. was. A I thought situation. we were all just heading out, and I, that's you what had I to. Thought. I had to go to Jake's house and wait for him, and wait, and wait, and wait, and wait, and wait, and then he finally comes down and he's holding. Um, I thought he got snacks for the car ride, which you know is a nice move. He shows up with one can of beverage for himself. This is such a Jake move. One thing for himself. No water for his dog. Luckily, I had a water that I brought for me to drink, which I ended up giving to Jake's dog oh for the car ride. Oh, my God. So it was, like, it was like an unbelievable situation. Well, she only needed water because client is too cheap to have his AC on because his car is going to die. Okay. It was 28 degrees yeah, outside, Jake. Yeah, why do you Jake. need AC? You don't need AC. I said, his cra- car was super hot. Cra- I said, cra- only if you have a sweating problem. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was cra- And I do. Yeah, yeah, you sure do. Oh, my God. You don't even, you, uh, I'll, well, I'll play you this later because we got to take a break, but he goes into a whole speech about how he's pitting out and has to change shirts oh, in, the middle, in the middle of the right. Oh. I mean, I'm telling you, it was disgusting. I, w- I really wanted to drive off that mountain. There, I was so thinking you, about you, it. So you would agree that your new car smell is gone? Gone. It is gone, and it is never coming back. It's a natural musk, and chicks dig it. And let me tell you something. It is. I was so mad because if I you thought. you have to say chicks dig yeah, it, they, they don't. don't. <laughs> natural <laughs> musk, baby. I couldn't. The next day, I said, maybe it's been a day. Maybe I'll go back in. I'll open the door, put my head in the car. smell new again. Nope. No, smells nothing. like Jake. Still Jake it's, musk. It's got Jake smell, oh. and it is a terrible smell. Oh, my God. So we'll uh, take a break. we got a lot to get to today, as we mentioned. For you, what do we have? WonderCon passes. We'll do that for you. Announce where you'll be going to next, which country, which band. That's coming up. Got to give away this big trip. Apparently, we have the best where'd you go, how far'd you go ever because it was a couple that went on a date with another couple. So I don't know if we want to call this a swingers edition. Ooh. I don't know if we want to call this a thruple edition. I'm not sure what we're calling it, but it's the greatest where'd you go, how far'd you go ever. I guess it's coming up later this morning. We got that to get to. Uh, and uh, the amount of excuses people brought to Ditch Day was out of control, and we asked all these people that were drunk, what was their excuse? And these are good ones you're going to need. If you want to get any time off work in the next few months or even today because you're hungover from St. Patty's Day, you'll want to hear these excuses. That's all coming up next, K-Rock. Uh, 
Alley Show. Klein Alley Show. 106.7 FM. K Rock. K Rock. Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters. That was Foo Fighters, correct? We got a big announcement coming up in about 30 minutes. Got to give away an international trip as well. But right now, $100 cash can be yours if you call us. 800 520 1067. Five questions about stuff that's been going on in the world this weekend. Perhaps you were drinking or you were running in a marathon. All sorts of stuff was going on in town. It's crazy, too. It's great being at a bar and drinking heavily and then seeing the recap of the L.A. Marathon on TV while you're, like, on your third beer I was and thinking, shoving wings in your face. I was thinking the same thing. I was eating incredibly terrible. I was eating so bad yesterday. And they were, like, a record number of people showed up, and I was like, right, yeah. you know, can I, I please double dip this in this blue cheese now? I, I saw someone walking around with the medal, and I was thinking about how sad it was when we ran that 5 K, which is nothing compared to a marathon, and uh, we felt so proud of ourselves that we had that little medal. Yeah, these so guys, we're in like forty-five minutes. These, that whole thing. Oh my god! If you'd like to uh, take a hundred bucks of Allie's money, the easy way, call us now 800-520-1067. Little thing we do called Allie knows the news. Open phones now for you uh, to take her money, and uh, once again, it's a great way to start your week. Start your week uh, Monday payday. I don't know why. They always do paydays on Friday. I feel like they should shift the entire concept of the payday, move that to the Monday, make that day. Yeah, because what the hell for? Because Monday is for the weekend. You already yeah. uh, Friday's already got good vibes. I'm saying so. If you come in on Monday, yeah, but the vibes are useless if you don't have money. No kidding. You get it on month. Yeah, no one's like, great. I got paid. I can't wait to budget this property. (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) I'm telling you, Allie, that's where it's at. (laughs) Now I can really do my meal prep. I don't know if you. (laughs) (laughs) What's wrong with you? I'm just saying. No, no, it's a great idea. It's a bonus payday. That's why we're we've been experimenting by paying people for, uh, you know, every morning right around this time for the better part of a year. And uh, the idea is that I think that on Mondays, not only has Ali paid more people, we did stats on this. Ali has lost Ali Knows the News more on Monday than any other day of the Oh, because everybody's dragging ass for sure. Everyone's Including dragging Including myself. Ass. Yeah, but mm-hmm. that's it. And the people seem the most excited on Monday to win. So yeah. that's all the research we need. And, and it's the Monday after technically a holiday. That's Ooh. right. You know what I mean? So I'm definitely even more... Uh, what's the word? <laughs> there you go. You, you want that hundred dollars? That's easy money. Eight hundred five two zero one zero six seven. We'll get to it next. Five questions in your money after this on K Rock. Klein Alley Show. K R O Q. K Rock. Alley knows the news. Action. Eight hundred five two zero one zero six seven. Here we go. Five questions. You win or lose. Let's find out if Alley knows the news. She's throat goat's favorite if she had to choose. Hmm. Let's see if Ali knows the news. Anybody seen my coat? Craig, welcome to K-Rock <laughs> this morning. We got uh, five questions here. Hopefully 100 bucks of her money is your money. You ready for this? I'm ready. Let's All do right. this. Let's right. do this. We got five questions here. Allie's going to leave herself, uh, leave the studio, sequester herself far away. We'll all score it together at the end. Ties go to the house. Your round of Allie Knows the News. The Monday edition starts now. Allie knows the news. Big news. Uh, this, I guess, mammal technically washed ashore in Malibu. What washed ashore in Malibu over the weekend? A well. Question number two. A woman wound up in this unique area after a pursuit through L.A. last night. It was a uh, high-speed chase, and where did the woman end up? In a ditch. In a ditch. Go to question number three. This pop star reportedly is $50 million in debt due to gambling. God, I can respect that. What do you think? Question number four. Uh, this is part of the reason that roads were closed all over the streets yesterday. Uh, this was a lot of road closures in Southern California yesterday because of this event that was taking place. What was it? Uh, the, the LA Marathon. And finally, this rapper claims that he suffered three strokes after a 2021 brain aneurysm. Dr. Dre? All right. This guy knows what's going on. Hold on, say nothing else. Allie's coming in. I'm telling you, there's something about these Mondays, paying the people on a Monday. I like the vibe to it. This guy wins, you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. You guys think I'm crazy talking about that Monday payday. That's where the payday should be. Allie, here we go. Question one. This uh, mammal washed ashore in Malibu over the weekend. A whale. 
Yeah, I was looking for gray whale specifically, but I will accept whale. Both of you said whale. He got it right. Tied up 1-1. We go to question two. A woman wound up in this unique area after a pursuit through L.A. last oh, night. Can't wait to talk about this. The ocean. Pacific uh, he ocean. said a ditch, but she did end up driving into the ocean. And then she tried to swim away. It was a great high-speed slash high-swim chase. Allie goes up 2-1. We go to question three. This is one of the reasons that roads were closed all over Southern California yesterday. Uh, this event took place, and there were a lot of road closures because of it. Uh, the L.A. Marathon. All right, he got that as well. Ali's up 3-2. We go to question four. This pop star reportedly is $50 million in debt oh. due to gambling. Bruno Mars. What did you say? Bruno Mars. Okay, sounds That's like, not what you said. No, you said it. Bruno Mars. Bruno Mars. Uh, Bruno Mars. Bruno Mars. I don't know if I can accept that. Come no, on. We cannot accept yep, that. Sorry. Sorry, he got it right. He said Bruno Mars. <laughs> He's tied it up now. Look at that. All tied up. You can't up. blame my mouth. Well, of course we can. And uh, question number five. This rapper said he suffered three strokes after a 2021 brain aneurysm. Yikes. Um, uh, 50 Cent? Oh. You know who said Dr. Dre? I'll tell you who said Dr. Dre. Craig on the phone said Dr. Dre, and that's correct. So did he well, win? Well, because you what? said Bruno R's, <laughs> <laughs> I think that means he wins. No. $100 yeah. of Allie's money. What? Hey, what the Craig, hell? look at nice that. Nice job, Craig. Nice job, Egg. Craig, you crushed it. <laughs> Allie's now not working properly today, and uh, you just won 100 Allie, what must you shamefully admit over the airways of K-Rock? Um, I guess I'm an idiot, and Craig knows the news. That's a fact. Craig, hey. congrats. Congrats, Egg. Thank, thank you. Thank hold, you. On, hold on one time. Gamble that money away. Do what Bruno would have done. No. Turn don't that, do it, turn that 100 it. bucks into a million. It's very easy. Uh, we will get into the rest of the show and give away some trips next on K-Rock. Flying, Flying Alley Alley Show. The world famous K-Rock. K-R-O-Q. It's Klein Alley Show. Hello. Hey, Klein. I just wanted to, I was thinking about you guys just on Friday, but uh, the Eagles were hats this weekend. No. They really did? Yeah. Check it. Yeah, I seen the eyeballs and everything. I was like, what? <gasps> what? No, no, no. The Eagles didn't hatch. They're sitting. They're sitting yeah, on a. My, they're sitting on a nest right now, man. Yeah, dude. Don't mess with me. Don't mess with my, like that. What the hell? <laughs> my mother-in-law showed me the Eagles were hats right there. I think that's what people are doing now when they have someone in their life that's obsessed with Eagle Cam. They just need it to be over with, so they just. And they, hey, and, they hatched. And they know we're done. They know it's not going <laughs> to probably be a happy ending because I think the eggs are frozen. So they're just going to uh, show them old footage and be like, "Look at this," and then people can feel good about themselves and move on. Is that what you think is happening? Is that the eggs are frozen? I believe that's right. <laughs> no, yeah, I believe they've frozen. Yeah, when they when they don't hatch, it's because they're frozen. They're frozen shut. Yeah, they see. can't open. That's, uh, that happens sometimes. You ever accidentally get high this when you thing grocery shopping? It's like shopping? typical egg freezing. I put my eggs, uh, a carton of eggs, in the freezer before accidentally, <laughs> and uh, it's never good. It's hard to crack them when that happens. You know, I did think for a second maybe I should take some time and go visit them before I went back down the mountain, and then I didn't. Well, uh, that means you don't really care. Omar I was, was like, obsessed. I should see where the nest is. You know, just like give them a little hats off. Just say like, hey, guys, I've been following you for weeks. Love you. Do you want to hear what one listener that actually did make the trip up to Big Bear thought after meeting us in person or no? Yes. Mm, okay, here we go. What's up, Klein Alley Show? So um, just got back down the mountain from the ditch day. Had a blast. Uh, can't say enough good things about everybody that was there. Um, you guys are great on the radio, even better in person. Um, as I heard somebody say, Ali, hey, you are a San Bernardino 8. Mm -hmm. So congratulations. So you've gone from being a Whole Foods 2 to a Colorado Walmart 8 to a San Bernardino 8, which is not bad. I mean, you're moving in the right direction. I'm working I my think. way up. I also, I don't, I don't know if this is a compliment. I got a lot of people going, you're much, you're much better looking in real life. Then people in, said that to your face? Then, yes. They were drunk. Then Holy it, crap. Yeah, man. they were. They They're were like, the pictures Jesus. don't do you justice. They were drunk so. and had altitude sickness. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> Klein, wearing sunglasses inside. Classic climb. Totally. They were, they you were, had not only sunglasses inside, but you had your hood up. 
Oh yeah, I was, he, he I, was like I was going really? inside and outside. I was going inside and outside, inside and outside. I wasn't staying okay, inside. It's so much work to take the hood on and off. Yeah, because I had Even drinks in my hand. Even though there was no reason to have it on. Douchebag. I had <laughs> drinks in both my hands, so I didn't have hands to remove the sunglasses and the thing. And by the way, when anyone reminded me, my glasses were on, I took them off right away. I wasn't trying to hide anything. I was, I was to be it's honest, weird. I wore them in the car <laughs> ride so that when Jake was talking to me, I could close my eyes and go to sleep and pretend I was listening to Jake talk and his stories. Uh, I did get a chance to talk to Jake the Nerd, and uh, we talked about the car wrapping situation. Mm. And uh, That's this week, by the way. Thank you, Sweet James. Uh, this is the week that we're going to wrap Jake's car. It's officially being done, and the pictures have been taken. They are very explicit, and that car will be driving all over the streets of Southern California. So the way he explained it, it kind of did make sense that... He didn't actually lose. This That's is right. the, he's still going around. Oh, it, God, we've moved dude, on. Give it up, Jake. And he's going around to people one on one, t- one on <laughs> one now, trying to plead his argument <laughs> to oh, listeners. Going door to door. And uh, this is why. Okay, I, and I don't have time to forget it's it. Like uh, one person on your street no, that still care. is doing like the election was rigged. You're like, stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, Enough. Like it's it, over. Like the term is almost up. The four I years. I know is it's up, been like, four years. Let's move on. So anyway, we'll uh, take a quick break. We're back in a second. We are uh, inches, uh, let's see here, 15 minutes away. Inches away. Inches away (laughs) from getting you the information you need for the next destination. K-Rock World Tour 2024. Destination number eight, band number eight, country number eight. That is coming up. Plus, we got to give away this trip for you to go see Green Day in Dublin, Ireland. So we got all that happening after this quick break. Your first look at the news. And then all this audio that we've been putting together from uh, our hang over the weekend. So if you were not there, couldn't make it, you're going to want to get into this. And the greatest, where'd you go, how far'd you go ever, all happening this morning right here on K-Rock. Klein. Owie. Shout. K-R-O-G. Klein Alley Show. K-Rock. Monday morning, there's the bad news. The good news is a huge announcement coming your way that will make your life instantly better in about five minutes. But first, this. Grab your Adderall. It's time for ADD News. Does anybody else smell that? Oh, wait, it's me. So I think any really good police chase has a little bit of everything. You've got to have speed as a factor, obviously. You've got to have creativity, both in driving technique and reason for being pulled over. And then usually something funny happening to the driver when they try to get out of their car oh, and run away. Remember pants the, fall down. Yeah, like that guy that tried to get out of his car and then he, like, couldn't and his pants fell off as he was climbing the out the window. Or that other guy who was trying to pretend to be a woman. That was great. And he had his wig, right. and his wig fell off as he was running remember on the highway. Remember the guy who came out of the car, and he was wearing a cape? Oh, remember yeah. That? <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah, there's, you're right. There's always one unexpected twist for it to be a, like, top-notch yep. car chase. Usually also sometimes when the car is not a standard car. That's the other thing. It could be. Oh, it's that's a always great. The right. Or there was, like, a forklift one once. Wienermobile, yeah. golf cart, yeah, totally. variety of things. So this one had all of those things and more. And two dogs. Which oh. was another twist at the end. Were they driving? That'd be cool. They were in the back. Uh, so this woman was driving on the freeway in a BMW, and as soon as the cops put their sirens on to pull her over for speeding, she just, boom, immediately went into triple digits. And then the whole thing ended in her driving into the Pacific Ocean and trying to swim away. There's in it. Last night was one of L.A.'s crazier pursuits with a female suspect driving straight into the ocean. About 11.30 p.m., CHP officers tried... did she know that she was in a pursuit or is that just a female driver? (laughs) She just wanted to go to the beach, (laughs) okay? Okay, because, I mean, you got to clarify. She She, had her dogs. She may have not She just wanted to go have a nice day. Tried to pull over a speeding BMW on the 10 freeway, but the female driver just kept driving west until she literally fell off the edge. The car and driver winding up in the ocean just south of the Venice Pier. Mm. The woman got out and started swimming, leaving two small dogs behind in the back seat. Onlookers on the pier and beach couldn't help but gawk. And then they had to, the, the, the CHP had to then stop their part of it, and they had to get some cops in a boat. To, to take over. To then take over, and then they were able to, like, capture her with a net. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> and one of those rings, oh, like great. a fish. Yeah. <laughs> great. And then she had to like hold on to the little lifesaver thing and get dragged back up. And so I'm very interested in this woman's story and she why. She watches a lot of movies, is my guess too. By the way, because like this uh, in a movie would work. Yes, and, or in Grand Theft Auto. Like there's times yeah. when you. I just know things are going bad if I'm in Grand Theft Auto. I'm I'm in, in the driving ocean. on the beach. <laughs> 
I'm yeah. like, all right, this has gotten yeah. out of hand. Yeah, people think that cops are like zombies. They can't go in the water. Yeah. Well, I'm like, this will take a little bit of leeway for them to have to get the helicopters and the boats out here. Like, that's me and my Grand Theft Auto mind. Well, if you're looking at the GPS map on your phone or on your dash, you're thinking to yourself, all I got to do is get to the blue. If I get to the yes. blue, I'm free. I'm in like, open water, uh, right. literally. Like, like, and then you go like, oh, the chase will come to an end. And then they're just right there with their net <laughs> they're and they're like, caught them. Hi. Yeah. And they, cool. they don't realize how swimming in the ocean is so hard. So I know. You barely move. <laughs> and she left her dogs in there. Yeah, like, what was going to happen yeah, there? Typical BMW driver. Oh, right? yeah. All right. There were no Mega Million or Powerball winners over the weekend. The jackpots are up to $875 million and $645 million, respectively. But the other exciting lottery news is that the identity has been revealed of the other big jackpot winner in California, the one that won $1.75 billion in Kern County last October. Oh, please be me. His name is not Klein. Oh, damn it. His name is Theodorus Stroik. Oh, what? That guy Isn't that an amazing name? Great rich guy name. Theodorus. Oh, my God. Yeah. I bet he, when he got named, too, they were like, that's a successful name. That does sound like a name of a guy that should have a lot of money. And uh, for Theodorus? all... For what we know, he's been kind of the opposite of that his whole life. He's a 65-year-old grandpa who lives in a really tiny town. It's 3,000 people. He bought a ticket for a group, so we don't know how big that group is, but apparently he's a very good man who just loves his grandkids, and I'm sure now... His grandkids love him right back. Yeah, finally. Let's and start calling to Theodorus see... back. Let's start returning his calls now because he's got money. Yeah, exactly. And then I'm interested, like, in how this group or this guy are going to spend the money compared to Edwin Castro, the guy who's kind of been the typical lottery winner where he's just kind of going around in Porsches and he's being seen with all these hot women and he's buying all buying these houses. houses. I got to get in on this one. I, I was I have not been playing for a while. I kind of felt like the odds were stacked against me. But now that the, no one's won the Power or the Mega, they're both pretty high. Ali actually is a pretty interesting. We can get through it now. Ali, Ali, I think, may have a winning ticket based, you like on, my system? based on what exactly she did to yep. get this ticket, which we'll get into next hour. Your lottery... The odds are way better you win a trip with us to go international and see a K-Rock band. We will uh, give away one trip, announce a second trip, and we'll do it all as we kick off a brand new hour of Klein Alley Show after Nirvana right here at K-Rock. Klein Alley yeah, yeah. Klein Alley Show. K-R-O-Q, the world famous K-Rock. 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 Good morning and welcome to a brand new week. Hungover? Sure, why not? Perhaps it was the altitude if you were up with us at Big Bear over the weekend or maybe the St. Paddy's Day drinking or... Hey, perhaps you just ran 26 miles in a marathon through the streets of Southern California, screwing yeah. up traffic for the rest of us. I, I, I'm always jealous of that just simply because they can eat whatever they want, you know. Not, not that anyone can't any time, but I'm saying, like, if you ran 26 miles today, you're probably like, oh, I'm going to order, like, an extra big bacon that, cheeseburger. No, because that's the thing. They don't do that. They, they have the discipline to learn how to run a marathon. They also have the same discipline to not order an appetizer platter just for themselves. You see that? They're, like, oh, they're, these are the ways. They're just different. They're just different. They're built different, you know. <laughs> And uh, once again, it was a clean Kenyan sweep of yeah. the uh, marathon. I don't know why that's surprising to anyone. No, it was like Kenya dominates LA Marathon. I was like, yeah, that checks out. Yeah. I feel like that's happened every year pretty much. Yeah, it's my own fault. I should start betting more on the Kenyans in the marathon. It's my own <laughs> stupidity. I always go like, yeah, I don't know. It's going to be the year. Yeah, you're so right, though, because it's like people that run marathons don't do like, in, in my head, it's called like the girl food math. Oh, where right. I'm like, well, I yesterday I didn't have this and this and this, so today I can have this, you yeah. know, and that's not really how marathoners think. Yeah, sometimes when I drink so much that I throw up, I actually calculate that. I go, that's great, because even though this is terrible, that's like I didn't eat today, so tomorrow exactly. I can eat a cake. And it's not, uh, it doesn't work out that way. No, we are, it does not. We are not nutritionists around here. Nope. It is Klein Alley Show. Good morning. How goes it? I'm Klein. There's Alley. Yep. We got DJ Omar Khan right there. Yep. Jake Z Nerd. What's up? Not a fun guy to drive with. We had a good time. I will play the audio <laughs> to prove otherwise. It's making me sad. Yeah, bro. Some of these uh, stories I hear about Jake are unbelievable. You, you Traveling just, with Jake is the worst. You have to wait. <laughs> I, 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 I took notes, and I will break down every minute of this trip, and it, it was going to blow your mind. I'm telling you, if you like Jake or dislike Jake, everyone knows someone like Jake. I promise you that. And you wait till you hear the stories I have for you from our road trip oh. to Big Bear. We'll get to that this hour on the show. Uh, of course, in the back room, you got Postmaster Johnny recovering from his first ever visit to snow. And Vanessa, 
Uh, we're all together again, which is a great way for us to kick off the show. Let me just see what this guy needs on the phone, because we have to make another announcement in a moment, but I want to palate cleanse for a moment. Guys, One-Armed Gary is on the phone right now. Oh, my goodness. One-Armed Gary was supposed to be there this weekend. He got yeah. lost. Hey, One-Armed Gary, we didn't see you up on top of Big Bear. Did you get lost driving up? No, I was hung over. So you missed the whole event, huh? I missed everything. I woke up, and it was the next day. Oh. Man, you were that hungover? You slept all day? Yeah, but you wouldn't believe it. I joined a pool team, and um, I've been practicing as much as I can, you know, as much as I can, and um, I've been getting ready for the rematch. Okay. Yeah, we brought a, um, Omar, one of the big uh, things we didn't get to do up in the mountain that we were excited mm -hmm. about is we brought a prosthetic arm with us, and we were going to do a pin the, pin the arm on Gary uh, game with people <laughs> at the bar. Nice. And we had a... No we, way. Yeah. And you and you stiffed us. All we just had a bunch of losers with two arms Stiff, up there. Stiffed us like a fake arm. Oh yeah. So we were standing there with a dumb extra arm we brought. People were going to get blindfolded and spin around and try to pin the arm on you, and you were nowhere to be found. Hey, well, keep that arm, man. I want it. Okay. <laughs> well, that's, you know, okay. The only guy. <laughs> oh, it's going to be like one of those headlines, like man gets prosthetic arm. Yeah. You know, All but right. it's just us like stapling it to him. Gary, uh, next time we do a big drinking event, you'll have to show up so we can give you this arm. Okay. Okay, I'll make sure. Make yeah, sure. it was not like a good one. It was like from a Halloween decoration, haunted house thing, Allie, but, you know. Oh, like one of those felt ones? Yeah. Uh, that hangs out of your car? Yeah, it was not great, That's but great. it would have been good for the game. It'd anyway. It would be so funny right. if that was on his arm. World famous K-Rock. Klein Alley Show. 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 Klein Alley Show. K-Rock. That Ben Weezer right there put on a hell of a little show on Friday night, and uh, we sent quite a few listeners to the uh, little bar in uh, Highland Park, the Lodge Room. And uh, Weezer did exactly what they said they were going to do. They went up there. They played that blue album from first song to last song. I decided to leave um, Snow Summit a little early so I could get down the mountain for that show. And I was glad I did. It was pretty great. And also, you know me, Allie, with my ADD, it was a perfect 45 minutes in length from start of album to end of album. That's the it. album is only 45 minutes 45 long? 45 minutes long. Perfect. That can't be right. It are you was totally right. Totally. It was, uh, they got, those songs are short. Buddy Holly's like a two-minute song. I think Sweater Song's the longest song on the entire album went on. But, I mean, it was great. It was... Um, did you see Dogstar? Or you didn't, you didn't I did, get there? I did get there for How the end of that? Dogstar. They're awesome. Dogstar's funny because uh, there's a whole band on stage, but every eyeball is just staring at Keanu Reeves. <laughs> and everyone's going like, whoa, look at Neo shred on the bass. I, I know, that's so cool. Uh, and there's other guys up there. But if the other guys had fallen off the stage, I don't think anyone would have even noticed. Yeah. Every single eyeball and every camera is fixated on Keanu Reeves. You know all those other guys are like, you know, I'm in the band Dogstar, and everyone's like, shut up. Yeah. Do you know who, Keanu? <laughs> no, who right. are you? I so, don't know no, what that they, is. They were, they were playing... Uh, you know, I'm not a music fan, but they were playing music, whatever. And then uh, then Weezer came out. It was a cool little venue there. Ran to quite a few uh, listeners and people that uh, either won tickets from. It was, it was just a good time. Uh, nice. Uh, anyway, the reason I bring that up is because it's part of our big announcement to make right now here on K-Rock. Uh, where will you be going to next as K-Rock World Tour rolls on? How about this? You will head to a little town known as Manchester, England. That's what we're looking for. <laughs> Let Allie do the rest of the announcement in an accent. No. She don't get her excited. What else we got, Al? Right, thank you for bringing what, that up. What band are we going to see? Uh, the band that I just discussed a moment ago. <laughs> no. This little band right, right here. Destination number eight, K-Rock World Tour 2024. You and Weezer in Manchester. Plus and how many shillings will it cost? That doesn't <laughs> shut up you. <laughs> Allie will not be there. It's going to be free if you win this trip. We just gave away a trip to uh, go see Green Day in Dublin, Ireland, and mm -hmm. you got to experience all the joys that Amanda was ex going through. You will get those same feelings. Uh, also, you'll get tickets to see Weezer right here at their sold-out show, just announced when Rivers was on with us last week at the Intuit Dome, not even open yet. Hey, October I'm in the 11th. Intuit Dome. You and now I'm doing an L.A. accent. The new, no, don't, we don't need more accents. <laughs> 
You'll get to go to that. You get that whatever, dome. Anyway, dome. Here's a ticket to the uh, show here at the brand new Clippers Intuit Dome. You'll get to go see them. And then again, potentially in Manchester, England. Oh, I'm into it. Great. Klein Alley Show. Klein Alley Show. 106.7 FM. K-Rock. Klein Alley Show, the big announcement a moment ago. Your chance to go see Weezer in Manchester and tickets to the sold-out Intuit Dome shows. Weezer was on to announce that tour, and those shows sold out pretty quick, so you'll get yourself in. Coming up again, uh, 9 noon. What is that? Hold on. Let me just make sure when we're doing that. Is that every hour today? Let's see. 9 noon, 3 and 6. There we go. 9 noon, 3 and 6 right here on K-Rock. Uh, get you into Weezer and potentially see them again in Manchester. So... If you've ever been on a road trip, I talked to a lot of people, especially people that live in Southern California and people that lived anywhere else in the country, I feel like it's a rite of passage. You potentially get in your car, wherever you're from, and you just keep driving, almost like that high-speed chase last night until you hit the ocean. Yeah. And if you drive with a good friend or someone that you've got a great relationship with, being in a car with someone for any extended period of time can really test the relationship. Well, and it depends on you liking the same things, if you like the same type of music, or if you want to do podcasts, whatever your thing is, or if you're going to have generally good conversation good for conversation. that amount of time. Or if you, you have to be like okay silence. with nothing, yes. Yeah, sometimes driving with someone that you are okay, no one says anything, and you're just fine. That's you're just a, driving. That's a great oh, thing I as well. I do that with my best friend. It's awesome. Yes. It's great. That's how you know your yeah. real good friends are, because you can mm-hmm. sit in complete silence. There's no expectation to talk. Right. Well, you nothing. probably will talk because you're good friends, but you don't have to. Now, uh, Just like me and Klein. Right no, on, bros. That seemed like an endless <laughs> Oh, I'm going to play you two, <laughs> minute, vomit two minutes of, of audio. For two and a half hours. Two minutes. Of, I boiled down two and a half hours of drive because we uh, left after the show to go up to Snow Summit for this ditch day. And the ditch day was fun and everyone we met up there was great. The low light for me was the ride with Jake for a few reasons. So let me start before we get to the audio. He, uh, The plan originally was we would leave from the radio station and we would drive up the mountain. Simple. Uh, all of a sudden, Jake decides, you know what? He wants to go home first and change somehow. Oh, my God. Are you serious? That's, That's why? Said. So he Well, wa- when he- I was leaving the building, I saw Jake in his car. And I was like, why are you right. driving anywhere? What's going on? And he was like, I'm going home. Client's picking me up. And right. I was like, well, I didn't so, know that was so, part of the plan. So the plan changed from instead of me just leaving here and going right to the mountain, it was leave here and go pick up Jake at his, at his house. Because? His, his girlfriend's house. Because he claimed it was on the way. But I, and- I, I mapped. I checked the map, and it said it from here to the top of uh, Snow Summit was going to take two hours and four minutes. And then I what? said, for com- that's it? For, yeah, and then for comparison's sake, from Jake's house, it said it was going to take two hours and six minutes. So I had to drive 30 minutes to, to Jake's place. But also, I live right next to where Weezer was. That's that, why. Okay. Whatever. So but we go- that's convenient for you, for Jake. not and for Klein. Klein. He yeah. has come back with no, me. No, no. Right. D- I didn't have to. So anyway, I go to Jake's house. I get there. I, I'm, I'm like, Jake, let's go, man. We got to get up the Did hill. Did he poop his pants? Why did he need to change? I don't know, Omar. And listen to this. He changed again. I'll play you the audio while we're in the car driving to the thing. Oh, man. So this guy changes a lot. Oh and it's God. crazy because... So he just, he sweats through his shirts. He has to have multiple every I day? I have social anxiety. I, w- I got to see Jake's closet. I went to his, into his house. It is the amount of t-shirts he has. It's, re- it's crazy because we think he wears the same three in here on a rotation. He's got like 5,000 t-shirts in his <laughs> closet and they're all piled to the ceiling and he kept they trying, are? and I had spilled on my shirt on the way back and he kept, he kept saying, Klein, here, I'll let you borrow a tool shirt and I said, no thank you. I would rather be shirtless than wear yeah. anything of yours. And he goes, come on, Klein, try it on. Come on, shirt buddies. So anyway, <laughs> here is... So wait, wait, when you say to the ceiling, how are they presented in his room? Are they on he, hangers or he, are they all folded? It is a, in, the top of his closet. It's, is he's a, a hoarder, right? Is, oh, yes. I, I, I took video and pictures of the five weirdest things I found in Jake's room, which we'll post later. You know, we joke, we joke about all the stuff he brings in here to the nerd hole. His room is the nerd hole times a thousand. Whoa. He's got a, cool. an octopus on one wall. <laughs> then he claims it's not his favorite octopus. He sh- takes me to this other thing. <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's all dead. I don't even know how many dead things there are. I lost count. It was wild. Oh, my God. That's terrifying. And I did see his girlfriend, and she does live in a completely different part of the house than he lives in. So I mean, it, they have, like, wings? Like, she, yes. He, and wow. Jake, I don't even think, has access to the front door of his own place. <laughs> I'm not kidding. He kept saying, let's walk walk around the side it's easier and i said are you oh, even no. able to get into the front door he goes doesn't matter oh, like i don't his no. girlfriend's I, oh. ashamed of jake I, yeah i think jake has to like go go in a different end. like he goes in through the back way like it's kind of <laughs> wild like jake, because are, he's just renting a room he's renting a room so anyway here we are this is us in the car together and just to give i i, I had to boil this down but this so you was, had to wait for him for a while so i wait i, I say jake i'm outside your house he goes I'll be right out then it's five minutes goes by. He's not out. 
10 minutes goes by. Now I think I'm in front of the wrong house because I go, this is crazy. He said he'd be right out. I, I, he, he, I don't Dude, know what's going on. This, this happened in Vegas. I, I we were all waiting in the Uber, and we have to yeah. wait for Jake because he has to go poop or change. I check the address again. It says I'm in the right place. Uh, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> it says, are you sure you don't want to be somewhere else? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Jake finally comes out, and he's holding, you know, what I what appears to be food. So I go, oh, the guy was nice. He took some time to put together a little snack bag for the road because cool. we just hightailed it right out of the work. And especially you're driving. You are driving out of your way driving to go up. pick yeah. him up yeah. because he doesn't yeah. want to come right. back here and pick up his car. That's so the we uh, we are about to. So he gets in the car. He sets up his little setup just for him. Now he's got one can of beverage for him. Mm-hmm. He's got his dog there. He's got his own little setup. He's setting up, and I go. Oh, did you did bring- he bring snacks for himself? Uh, now, do, do you have snacks, Jake, or just that drink? Just that one drink, which yeah. I didn't even drink. Yeah. You could have had it, right? <laughs> wow, that's Thanks, really Jerry. great. So, and I thought about asking you if you wanted a bagel. I oh, thought yeah. about I, asking I said, you. Right, I said to Jake, I said, I, said to, I said to Jake the following. I said, dude, are you starving? I'm starving right now. He goes, no, nah, not me. It just made myself a bagel. And oh, it, my and, God. And that's what I was waiting. While I was waiting in front of his house. <gasps> he he was, was in there making himself food? Making and eating himself a bagel. <gasps> and then he comes out with this one can of drink for himself. Oh, so that's the beginning of the God. thing. Here is... Some of the conversation in the ride. Used to be based on this band, this band called Hagfish. Their album is 29 minutes long. This is all songs are quick punk rock songs. Hagfish. Right. Uh, they had like a hit. Probably was on K Rock. It was on the end in Seattle. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Anyone know them? Yeah. Zach from Rise Against knows him because he was in that band. Uh-huh. Yeah. So it's a lot of him spouting out details of things that I care nothing about. And was this minute one? Like, the, where was this? This was life? after we listened to Weezer because there was like, oh, he's talking about quick albums. And that's why I brought up that 29 minute album, Hagfish, Rock Lay Mass. It's a good record. So there's that. And that, you said they had one hit, maybe, that was probably played maybe. on K Rock, yeah, but was definitely really played in yeah. Seattle. Yeah, yeah, moving on. It takes money to have all those lights. <laughs> what? Like, yeah, you gotta be, if you have like a ton of lights, like crazy lights on your taco truck or your setup, you have to be have pretty good tacos because you have to be doing like a lot of business because it takes money to have all those lights. So it's like Vegas, right? Like the brighter, the brighter lights, the better the taco. That's what I think. My si- so that's uh, him talking about his theory about taco trucks. Do Solid you, theory. Do you think that Jake spends too much time alone? Yes. And that's why yeah. he's just, it, he just word vomits when he's Ooh. around people. Yeah, and then he brings up, you know, his sister that he's got a crush on. He couldn't go, <laughs> he couldn't go a car over without talking about her. So he brings her up immediately, you know. My sister bought this. My sister bought a load of horseshoes. Oh my. Uh, uh, every me- conversation I want to get out of right away. I don't, I don't know how this starts. This isn't like I'm so talking about my sister's sister. sister's just like her? Just like him? Just like Jake. And she's going to turn him into art. Oh. And she never got around to it. My dad did it instead. Because she has a life. Turn him into dope ass shit, and it looks dope. So that's uh, me. me con- Horseshoe art. Yeah. So, th- so then there's that part of the conversation. Hey, Allie, we're now. Uh, so I- you have a whole family of weird collecting hoarders. Sort of, but this is this is false advertising. Eighty percent of this ride was Klein bitching about his EV. Okay, that's also... You're trying to change the subject. Also not true. It's true! Yeah, now we're on this path. We're not we're, going Jake, away from Jake, it now. We're, 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 th- th- these are all conversations. Then Jake decides he wants to get into a would-you-rather situation. Crack pipes. No, 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 sorry. I'm out of order here. This would is, you rather crack pipe or what? This is Jake's... Uh, t- expo- <laughs> I'll take the crack pipe. This is Jake explaining his theory about crack pipes now. I mean, it's like... I, I can't even... You hear me here. I'm sitting there just driving, thinking eventually he's going to stop. And he yeah. just goes... He, because whether it's Jake's journal or another human being, it's just him that. trying to Listen, work out more stand-up here, material. Here's, here's Jake. Crack pipes, same as DMT. Um, you don't want to put flame directly onto the drug because uh, it... <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't work as well. He's like an expert at everything. Cool. But he's an expert. He's telling me now how to smoke crack if I ever want to go. And I would have... You that, asked me about dabs. But dabs, you do put the torch onto it. So you don't have to smoke dabs out of a crack pipe. But DMT and crack, yeah, you smoke out of a crack pipe. So there you go. So <laughs> th- that's that. Uh, Allie, f- finally we get near the... Ma- and I just keep looking going, please, uh, we got to get to this mountain eventually. I mean, it- it's like at some point he's got to run out of things to say. We're going to get to the mountain. Then he uh, decides to talk about 
I was talking, I, I, God forbid, I brought up the cyber truck at one point. That's it. I, I'll tell you that. And then he goes on this thing. Tank has treads, man. That's the whole thing. He starts talking about, would you rather drive a tank or a bulldozer or something <laughs> You like. said the cyber truck would be the best thing in the snow or whatever. It beats everything. Yeah. That's what you said. Right. And then, and that's it. I was just making a comment because we drove by a cyber truck. And then Jake says this. The tank has treads, man. That's the whole thing. They don't even have wheels. They have treads. So, oh, look at that pizza. Are you trying to change like, the subject? I was trying. I drove by a pizza place. Pizza says what? I was excited because we finally got up in the mountain there, and I saw a pizza place uh, as we were getting close to Snow Summit, and I go, great, uh, there's pizza. Let's maybe change this topic off of this, but no, Jake. It's like a, you know what's next to a tank is a bulldozer. Oh. They have treads, too. So the, what is your point? <laughs> those are more like all-terrain things than a cyber truck. Now you got recording me again, son of a bitch. That's what he called me recording him. <laughs> yeah, but... So what's your point? Whenever a client asks a follow-up question, that's when you know you're being recorded. <laughs> Yeah, that's why. So, so wait a minute. Your theory is that it's better to drive in the snow in a bulldozer? Than a cyber truck. Klein brought yeah, it up. Klein said general... a cyber truck's like the best all-terrain no vehicle. No one's just going on the highway with bulldozers. That's yeah. not the... Yeah, this talking is, about like the, all terrain vehicles. Oh my god! And then Ali, when we finally get to Big Bear, this is we finally get there now, and I'm I'm all excited. And then Jake, we sit in the parking lot, and he starts taking his shirt what off. What are you doing? Sorry, right, man, I gotta change my shirt. Why? Yeah, I pitted out my shirt. I'm all anxious. I pitted oh. out my shirt. Why? Why can't you do that when we get there? Jesus. We are here. We get inside. I'm saying. Why do you have to do my car? God. Why not? Because then I have to find a bathroom. And so, I mean, it was just like, that's just an indication. I of have what, a condition. And that was only the drive there. So he was so, is he, was he nervous talking then? Like he's nervous I, around you? I don't know. Wow. But there's more on the drive back. That's when the, oh, weird, no, that's when the weird stuff Turn happens. Turn around. Turn around. Flying. Flying. Alley. Alley. Show. The world famous K-Rock. K-R-O-Q. I mentioned earlier this morning that we're going to send someone to Weezer uh, in Manchester, England. It is destination number eight, K-Rock World Tour. And there are things happening in other countries, and we always decide, should we import these to America or leave them where they are? Some of the greatest things that have ever happened in this country started in other countries, from meatballs, menage a trois, mm -hmm. and I'm sure a bunch of other things as well. And now there's something going on in, which country is this, Allie? This is actually in England. In England? Mm -hmm. They're doing something. I don't know if it's Manchester, but it is England. Tell me if you think London. we should. Should we bring oh, this? Thank you, Vanessa. Should we bring this to America or should we leave it where it is? So, obviously, rent is very expensive everywhere. And in London, that's one of those cities that it just keeps going up and up and up and up. So, anything that anybody can do to lower their rent is worth investigating, right? And there is an apartment complex in London that has a no sex policy. They say, you know what, you can live here, and the rent is more affordable by a pretty good amount, but you are not allowed to have anybody else in your place as far as sex goes. You can have visitors, but they also have, like, curfew, you know, nobody in there past 11 p.m. Is it's a like convent? A, it's like, <laughs> it's what, like what? a quiet... It's like my house. It's like a quiet complex. Yeah, why would they... We want everything low-key. We don't want people having sex. We just want a super chill... Environment. How are we going to enforce this? Like, how, like, well, that brings up a lot of the questions, right? I mean, how it, it's not like they're going to going to do random checks like a prison, but huh. if they hear anything or if there's any neighbors ratting each other out and seeing that they're bringing somebody in, that kind of thing. So right. it's a little bit on our system, but if you think about it, having more affordable rent and just choosing if I'm going to have sex to go to somebody else's house. Or to get a little creative and find, like, you know, a nice parking lot to do it in. Are you willing to go through that for a discounted rent? Which I think a lot of people would. You know, it's interesting. I think I lived in a place like this when I was in um, Spain. Because the place I lived in was like a, it was like a half hostel, half apartment situation. Oh. And they had rules that if you had any guests that stayed over the night. So basically anyone who came in after I think it was like 11 p.m., mm -hmm. they would you would get banged out for an additional fee, like a Whoa. guest fee. And I think that that was their plan of trying to enforce the sex thing probably. Yeah, and they didn't realize my face enforced the sex thing. They didn't need that rule. <laughs> At 11 p.m., everyone is leaving. Yeah, there was no, I was trying. <laughs> I'll pay triple if they spent the night. They didn't want to. Yeah, but I mean, if you think about the lengths people would go through for cheaper rent, especially if it's a nice place, and then someone's like, hey, let's go to your place. And you're like, I can't. But sex is one of the least 
as a neighbor who has lived in many apartment buildings, that bothers me so much less than so many other things. Why is that the thing that they would try to? I would say crack anyone who on? likes techno or anyone who likes me, you know, right. like any music related stuff or anybody who plays an instrument right. is not allowed. Like you, there are a lot of rules yeah. that I would enforce before you own and a sex. ping pong table. Like there's a lot of things that would be super annoying if the idea is let's keep this place unless they assume sex leads to parties or parties lead to sex. But it seems right. like that's a crazy cut down that they would say you can live here and the rent is cheaper, but you cannot have sex. Mm-hmm. I'd say export that. Oh, I that's... would say import. Anything to make the rent cheaper. And I think people would find ways to have sex quietly or they would find ways to have sex in more creative places, which is just going to make your sex life better. I, I, I will say that's the one benefit of this is that I do think because... You know, you guys always make fun of me because I say it's kind of fun when I go back to my parents' house and try to, you know, get one in. You guys think I'm weird. It is but it's because wrong. you're like, it, it because it takes you back to that place of like breaking the rules, sneaking around. There is something extra hot about the sex if you're in a apartment that you know has yeah, a no like, sex you policy. You can't do it. Can't do it. And then it becomes that temptation. So I think maybe that makes the sex better there. I think so too. You're going to find out this is one of those buildings probably has cameras everywhere and they're they got some, like, website that a bunch of guys, like an OnlyFans situation. God, I bet the self-pleasuring in that complex, too, is, like, through the roof. <laughs> just constant, like, <laughs> toilets just... clogged with tissues again. <laughs> <laughs> we take a break. We're back in a second. When we return, guys, uh, this is where it gets good. More show, more tickets, and somebody is going to go see Weezer in Manchester. First spot on that standby list coming up in an hour right here on k Rock. Klein, Ellie, show. show. The world famous K Rock. K Rock. Monday morning, let's figure out what's going on in the world together with your ADD news, and we kick off a brand new hour of the show. Get you uh, some WonderCon tickets, as well as getting you on that standby list to go see Weezer in Manchester, England. And uh, next hour, oh man, I can't wait, Allie. All the excuses that people use to get out of work and join us on Friday. These are excuses you can keep in your back pocket. You may need them for the future. Because you want to take a day off work for whatever the reason is, you need to have an excuse ready to go, like this one. My tooth fell out too, and I, I needed, but I needed to go to Mexico because it takes two days to take a cast, and then I put it in tomorrow. So that guy had to go to Mexico to get dental work. That I was hope the story he pitched he told. it just like that. That's exactly God. how he said it. And uh, look at him. He got to hang out with us. Let's find out what's going on in the world together now with your ADD News. Grab your Adderall. It's time for ADD News. I didn't bring my lunch today. Let's see what Chyla brought. Oh, hummus. Is there a cookie in there, too? I would like a cookie. All right. Think about the most productive two hours of your life. And then think about everyone who ran the L.A. Marathon over the weekend and how some of those people can run 26 miles in that two-hour time span. Makes cleaning out your garage seem pretty lame. That's crazy to me. I do so little in two hours. I know. To run 26 miles is... (laughs) Well, the world record is two hours and 35 seconds. And the winner of the L.A. Marathon over the weekend ran it in two hours, 11 minutes, and one second. And then the winner for female, Stacey Nadiwa, she won the women's at two hours and 25 minutes. Oh. So, Man. I mean, I think. That's a sprint the whole time. And this, yes. That's and, a full sprint so the, the whole the time. So the world record, that would be a four, I think it's a four minute, 36 a second mile. So you're running four and a half minute miles. You're you're basically sprinting for the entire time. Didn't it take you like an hour to do the 5K, which is like two miles? That was after I got had the baby. That, that yeah, took... you should be lighter. Yeah, you didn't have <laughs> no, a No, I was 40 pounds heavier. Yeah, but I'm saying still, I mean, that's crazy. It took you half as long to go two miles <laughs> as it took them to go 26. No, it was 3.1 miles. Whatever okay? it was. Okay, and it took me a solid 45 minutes. But the last time we did it, I think I did it in 35 minutes. Man, that's, that's incredible. But that's running like 10-minute miles, you know what I mean? And this is four minutes and 35 seconds. And then they said they had a record turnout. It was 25,000 people taking part in the marathon over the weekend. And I wonder if it was as a result of those um, reports that America's fatter than ever. Probably. And they're like, all right, you know what? We got to make it some kind of a change. Or if people just want something to look forward to. They want a challenge, right? I was waiting for my wife somewhere yesterday. And this place had a massage chair. So I just sat down in the massage chair. And then a guy walked by that clearly had just run the marathon because he had his medal around his neck. And, his and, he, was, and he was wearing his, he had his whole thing on. 
and he was standing right next to me, and I was like, should I? Am I supposed to, like, get up and offer him this massage chair? Because, like, he deserves it. Like, I didn't do anything. Uh-huh. I'm sitting in a massage chair. I did nothing all no, day. No, yours need to be massaged because they're just, you know, my, they're, like, atrophying. Yeah, my muscles haven't been worked at all. <laughs> but I was thinking to myself, you like, need something. it's like an old woman gets next to you on, like, a bus. You feel, like, obligated to stand up and give her your seat. Like, I was like, should I offer this? I guess I should probably I stand up. I bet he didn't want it. And offer the guy. But uh, I just waited, and eventually he moved on. I just always wonder what the rest of their day is like. You know, it's like okay, I ran a marathon today. It was well, that was the two, the two or three hours of my life. What am I going to do now? You know how accomplished we felt doing the five k, and that's nothing. But for us, that's a big accomplishment. Yeah, the rest of the day, I was like, Bear! these marathon people, the ones that are like regular marathoners, that you know, they they do this you know four or five a year. They just go to different cities and run marathons. I don't think that they, I, I think to them, it's the equivalent of us going to Costco. Like, it's like, up, oh, woke up, did a marathon, got on with my day. Well, yeah, like big runners, they'll just run for a couple hours every morning. And they, if they yeah. run fast, they could run like 13 miles in one run. Yeah, my just rec- a general run, morning run. If I ran that thing, it, it would it would take over my next month and a half. I would sit down and I would just have food shoveled into my mouth. I really want to interview the last place finisher. I think they're still going. <laughs> Usually, there's always one person that finishes like a 24 hours after the Like the cleaning crews right behind you. All right, usually there's not a lot of crossover between tech conventions and music festivals, but in the case of this tech conference, it is being dubbed AI Woodstock. Because it is going to be just that massive. You know the company NVIDIA? They, that's the company that makes one of the biggest AI chips that are being used. And I don't know a lot about this tech, but apparently that's like the company that makes all the cool AI stuff. They're holding this big annual conference. But because of this exciting time in AI and the advancements that they're making... They said that this is going to be an insane... That's why they're calling it AI Woodstock, because they're like, there's going to be an insane amount of new products. Everyone is so excited about it that they think 300,000 people are going to attend either in person or online because it's it's like the golden age of AI. I have so no AI interest Woodstock is coming. In this, but I do think that like if you're standing you around... You are going to be interested once it actually gets to us, the technology. Yeah, once I'm able to have my own sex robot, I'm very interested. Yeah, but this up- is their, their this is the kind of stuff they're working on. Yeah, right? I know. I know, but they have to pretend they're doing a bunch of If it's of AI other- Woodstock, they got to have sex robots. Yeah, but they're not going to they don't want it to they don't want everyone to think that's all they're doing and even though that is the most important thing cuz that is going to make the most money, they want to make it look like they're working on AI surgeons and all this other, you know, more respected industries. Uh-huh. But then everyone's just kind of waiting for the big announcement. It's like when Apple does all that stupid stuff and everyone's just waiting for the new iPhone, you know? Like she right, shows they're like, the look at our new stylus. Yeah, and everyone's like, got it, like, moving on. Up. Same thing with everyone's waiting for the sex robots, but like the really good ones that look real and kind of can interact with you and make it feel like it's real stuff. But they have they can't open with that, so they got to open with all the other boring stuff. <laughs> you should be a speaker. I'm, I'm happy to speak today, I would so. <laughs> you better believe it. Uh, and then finally, divorce is something that is widely accepted at this point. People throw divorce parties. My mom has been through two of them, and she's living her best life. But it seems that now in 2024, and I'm really surprised about this stat. They just did a study, and they found out that marriage rates are up and divorce rates are down. So it's kind of starting to take a turn. I don't think that's that can't be accurate. I think people don't feel as much pressure to get married anymore. They're kind of going away from like the conventional. Oh, when you reach a certain age, you got to get married. Yeah, but start you're a saying, but, but you're saying that the marriage rates are up and divorce rates are down. I so know, I but would... I think people are more methodical about their marriages. You know what I mean? They're not just getting married to get married. So you're... when they do get married, they're like into it. You know what I think? I think I think people are more open to the idea of the open marriage. Mm. So I think that people are like, I don't need to get divorced because I'm just open AI marriage. Bang on a side. sex robot into the next. That's what it's all about. Uh, hey, uh, Vok, you're on K Rock. Good morning. Hey, hey, what's up, Clyde? How are you doing? Doing fine. There's our time to chat, but thank you for calling. All right, Clyde Alley Show. Uh, good morning. Hopefully, you know where your pants are if you were out partying for St. Patty's Day yesterday. Running in the race, very different things going on yesterday. Very different reasons why you probably weren't driving around Southern California yesterday. Maybe you were with Ali's wife at a bar by herself, celebrating her love of alcohol for St. Patty's Day and her Irish heritage. Although she's not, what percentage Irish is she? Well, her dad is 100% Irish. He's, his whole family's Irish. Oh, but okay. Katie's adopted, but so she doesn't have the same genetics. But she oh, so herself... she's 0% Irish. No, she's, 30, she's like a third Irish, but... 
it's a big thing in her family because her a whole side of her dad's family is Irish. And you said her family, her dad is like a big drinker specifically, right? Well, he's like that quintessential, like, I'm just going to sit at a bar with a pint and kind of be like stew in my feelings and memories and like right. he, it's that kind of vibe. That sounds fun. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's all in good spirit, but it's also really sad. sad. Yeah, we got it. But, okay. but I did, after I think beer number four, get a pitch from Katie on opening up her own bar and why that would be a great idea. Oh, she wants to open a bar now? She was like, I, I've said it before and I really think I can do it. I'm I, not cheating I want to open up my own bar. And I said, Katie, you will die. Oh, yeah. If, if we do this. Oh, yeah. Like, you won't be able to. And she was like, I think it'd be really healing. I was like, what? why do you think it'd be healing to own your own bar? She's like, because then I'll learn how to have a better relationship with it. I was like, I think that will be the opposite. How about because she's a licensed therapist, she calls the place uh, Therasips, and she <laughs> actually has real licensed therapists behind the bar. Because, you know, bar- bartenders give usually pretty good advice Absolutely. in general. Absolutely. And I think that some of her love of being a therapist also comes from the love of connecting with people, Through which happens in, which happens with alcohol. With, yeah, with alcohol people open as up well. Because that's where people open up the most, when they're drunk or Absolutely. when they're in therapy, right? Yeah, so, and she loves hearing all of it. That's a good con- you She can have that idea and run with it. Well, she claims that in our area there's not just a good, solid bar. She's wrong. There's a good, solid bar in every area. There's bars. I mean, everywhere. I kind of agree with her. There's kind of not in oh, our area. Yeah, yeah. She and and once she opens hers, there will still not be a good solid bar <laughs> in your area. I you are correct. So anyway, this hour on the show, what do we got for you? The maybe the greatest. Where'd you go? How far'd you go ever? Because we have a couple that went out with another couple. I don't know how it ended. I don't know where they went, but we'll get into that coming up a little bit later. The greatest excuses we got from drunk people that were uh, with us at Ditch Day on Friday, up at Snow Summit for uh, the first ever Klein Alley Show Ditch Day. Klein Alley Snow. That was a big thing. And uh, people were leaving a variety of messages on the GOAT line over the weekend on topics all over the place. I was uh, so happy Jake sent the podcast super early. But then it's missing like a big chunk in the end. Ah, I am going to kill Jake. (laughs) So there you go. Death threats. Wouldn't be a day we're checking the GOAT You're not alone. Klein wants to too. Death threats. You don't even know about his drink order when the two of us were together. It's wild. We'll get to it later. It's K-Rock. The world famous K-Rock. Klein Alley Show. K-Rock In less than one hour, first name goes on the new standby boarding list to see Weezer in Manchester, England. Destination number eight, K-Rock World Tour 2024. And uh, perhaps now you're seeing Weezer just posted some stuff from the show they put on Friday. They were, uh, go ahead, they were practicing doing the entire Blue Album from start to finish. I was lucky enough to be there. It was uh, quite a... Quite a spectacle to see. Mm-hmm. Great. Really impressive stuff. And uh, You're glad you went. I'm glad you, I went. You were I glad th- you went all the way there and back the same day. It was a lot for me. Yeah. No one was more surprised that I was there than me. But uh, I recommend you go see them, and we'll give you some tickets to the sold-out show at Into It coming up at 9 o'clock and get you on the standby list to see them in Manchester. Omar Khan is a yep. real man. And whenever I talk about how I wish I was more of a man... Omar will tell me things he does, and I think to myself, I would never even think to do it. Now, sometimes it's something simple like building furniture, where I go, nah, I would mess that up big time. Yeah, which is ironic because you are such a man. Like, you have so much hair. Yes. I resemble <laughs> You know, a man. like, you're so man I resemble a caveman, but I don't, uh-huh. like, have the ability to be a man when it which comes Which I'm sure your ancestors were really good with, like, tools and hunting and Probably stuff, but you're were. not. Omar yesterday battled a bunch of bees. Now, there's a video we're going to post in a moment at Klein Alley Show, and you have to see it because you will not believe it. That was a pun intended. It, Omar, uh, Omar battled <laughs> Omar battled like 5,000 bees. And this is not his first bee fight that he's gotten and this into. Is, yeah, and I won the first bee fight. This one was totally different, and I, mean, I could have died knew. yesterday, guys. But here's the thing, Omar. I, you, the first bee fight you got into, if that I remember. That was in your mm-hmm. backyard. Yep. And what was your strategy that time? Um, Kill the queen? So my- no, my well, my strategy was just you know go over there, soak them with the water hose. Oh yeah, and then and then after that, go and spray um, some uh, Dawn dish soap on there because they don't like that scent, and then they'll never return. Yeah, and it, it Dawn worked. is great for ducks, but bad for bees. Yeah. So wait a minute. That, that you heard that you read that online, or like how do you know yeah. that information? You just read online. I read it online. Wow. Just read it online. Yep. Mm. It's funny mm-hmm. how people just see something online and just go, "That is fact." Yeah. And, and my, the first YouTube and, video I watch, I'm like, "There's that's what I know now. And it worked. 
Yeah. Great. Well, unlike Omar with no. the Dawn B thing, I saw something yesterday that said if you are feeling congested, take your fist and put it in your armpit and squeeze your arm really tight for three minutes and the congestion will go away. And I did that and nothing happened. And I realized, <laughs> I said, I'm an idiot. Like I just said, this, someone got me good. So, okay. So Dawn dish yeah. soap gets bees away. All right. So the first time it was o- point Omar, no points bees. So then what happened yeah, this totally. time? totally. So um, this was at my, actually at my rental property. So I got a text saying, you know what? There's some bees going um, inside the wall <gasps> through the AC hose. Oh, my God. There was So the, the tape came unraveled. So the bees, we hear some buzzing inside the wall. And I'm like, oh, man, um, I'm going to go spray some Dawn, you know, dish soap over there. And You're like, battle I got the bees. this, guys. Funny. Yeah. Omar's got I us. know about the yeah. Dawn thing. Don't worry. Exactly. I'm the man so, for this. I asked them, like, how many bees do you think there are? And they, they tell me, you know what? We don't see a lot of bees flying around, like maybe 10 bees flying around, but we hear some buzzing inside the wall. So I was like, you know Dude, what? I need terrifying. to go check this out. Yeah, before it gets worse, because this, this could go south real fast, right? So I drive down there and I, you know, stop at the Stater Brothers, get my get my soap on, <laughs> my, uh, you know, and my little sprayer thing. And I get there and yeah, for, for sure, there's like, you know, bees in the wall and around there, there's only maybe 10 bees. So I get my the little like Windex bottle and I'm like spraying the bees and uh, they're going down. I'm thinking, oh, this is great. Wow. So after about they 10 minutes. They go down right away when you spray them? With that dog? Um, not like right away, but they kind of like, you know, they get disoriented they get and they fly all and stuff. Yeah. Because, cool. yeah, you yep, know, it's yep, not yep. cool. You can't kill. Be- if you kill bees now, you become public enemy number one. No, you just got to like roofie them. You got to move them all. Yeah, I think that's, that's what the I'm idea. doing. You'll relocate yeah, I'm take the advantage bees. of them later. Right. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> Smart. Okay. So, so then, so they're all, they're all dropping like flies. These, ble- these bees are dropping like flies. I'm like, this is great. I'm going to save me $450 because that's how much it takes for the guy to come out and deal with the bee problem and he also has to uh cut a hole in my wall by the way and then i have to pay for that for that repair oh, man. Hey, omar quickly are you wearing any protective gear like a beekeeper so or- i'm wearing i'm wearing i'm wearing gloves i'm wearing like a hoodie and jeans and uh uh special goggles that's what i'm wearing oh okay when you say yeah, special go- special goggles <laughs> well, like, needs you well to- you know just those clear goggles okay. you know to protect right. my eyes okay got it and so uh I, all the all the fl- uh, I'm there ten minutes. I'm spraying, spraying, spraying. All the bees are gone at this point, but there I still hear bees, um, you know, uh, inside the wall. So I tell the uh, tenant, "Hey, can you like smack them, you know, there, uh, so they you know come out of the hole." So she's there, like you know, smacking the wall, smacking the wall, smacking the wall, and then they start coming out, and I'm spraying as they they're they're gone. Oh, coming out. interesting. They're spraying, spraying, okay, spraying, so spraying. she's she's smacking to get them outside, and you're spraying yes. them as they leave. Yep, yep. And okay. then, so another, you know, couple minutes go by. There are no bees anywhere. There's still some in the wall. But then out of nowhere, I hear this, like, slight roar. And I'm just like, <laughs> no. what is that? And I hear that. Yes, I hear that. And I'm like, what? And I turn around, and I'm not kidding. It was, it was like a scene out of a movie. <gasps> a swarm of thousands of bees are coming at me <gasps> and i'm like what is happening you know what and i'm like don't open the you know i'm yelling oh, to the tenant don't, don't, open, the door, don't open the doors yeah it was crazy and then so i'm in the middle of the swarm so i drop everything i have and i like you know book it and uh, go into the uh, uh front of the house <gasps> and i'm just watching this swarm of bees in the back you know and then when they settle down that's where i shot the video that you guys have the thousands of bees are in the a general area where they were getting in, inside they're like the wall. taking over the side of the house they're all just yeah. like on the wall like setting up shop yeah and they swarmed for a good 10, 15 minutes. I couldn't even get back there. And then finally, when uh, they could settled have been, down. You could have been the star of your own local news story. Had you been attacked by like thousands of them, it would have been you know, a yeah. local idiot wearing special <laughs> goggles attacked by thousands of bees because wow. trying, to spray, you know, trying to spray them with some right, dish soap. Right, because he had dish soap you know? that he read about on TikTok or something. <laughs> so you never got stung? I never got stung, no. And uh, you know, once once everything swarmed and got all crazy, I was just like, yeah, I'm gonna have to, you know, bite I'm gonna the bullet need and spend more some dawn. Money. More sauce. <laughs> more sauce. Klein, the world Alley famous show. K Rock. Klein Alley show. Morning, on K Rock. The following segment comes with a warning. Vanessa wants to make <gasps> this very clear. I don't know what's going on here. I just know Vanessa was just in my ear for the last two minutes during that song, going. It's a good one. This is not. 
This is not who should not be listening now? Okay, if you're a kid going to school right now, parents, please change the dial. I wouldn't usually say this, but this one is wild. Like, it's juicy. You don't want to miss it, but kids cannot listen to this. Vanessa. Kids, please. I Vanessa, in class already. I don't know what it is. Even, are, we, are we talking about the couple we're about to have on for where'd you go? Yes, how far did you go? This is the first couple. I couldn't believe it. He like pitched himself. Well, and listen, I was like, this is wild. Here's the thing. Now I've already, I feel like now I can already assume that this didn't just end with them parting ways because already just by her saying it's juicy. Now, unless Vanessa is so smart that she's, because she did work for NASA, she could be. <laughs> That's true. She That's could, the one. I'm so smart. <laughs> she could be potentially uh, trying to sabotage our guesses in this edition of Where'd You Go, How Far'd You Go? Mm-hmm. But for the first time ever, a couple that went on a date with another couple. Is it another couple or is it a throuple? Oh, you know what? I don't even know the answer to that. I guess we'll find out together. I'm just guessing. And they, they're going by fake names because they don't even want their real names used on the radio. Oh, cool. We'll so find that, the real ones. This has all the makings for a good story this morning here at K-Rock. Let's get into it. It's Where'd You Go? How Far'd You Go? Hit it. Here we go. Where'd you go? How far'd you go? Did you guys go play bingo? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Did you guys take a slow or no? I'm intrigued just on the warnings ahead of time. Already, I like where this is headed. Let me say hi to <laughs> Jason and Carla. These are your fake names. Yes. Hi, okay. guys. Thank you're you for Mr. joining us. Mr. and Mrs. Juicy. Mr. Yeah. and Mrs. Juicy, a pleasure <laughs> to welcome you to Where'd You Go? How Far'd You Go? So I, uh, I guess the first question is, so we can even figure out where, what we're playing with, did you go on a date with another couple, a first date, or a first date with another person? It was uh, another couple. Okay. First date, yeah. Right, first we're going to each ask you a question. We're going to try to figure out where'd you go, how far'd you go on the date. But according to Vanessa, it was very juicy. So I have a feeling already I'm going to go full on swap. But well, let's get to that when we get to it, okay? I have this so is, many questions. Uh, how long, before we get into the actual questions, how long have you guys been a couple? Uh, 14 years. Mm-hmm. And how did you meet the couple that you went on the date with? Uh, met them through an app, of course. So it's a specifically couples dating other couples app, or is it like, you know, a threesome? Um, field or something, yeah. or someone called? It was actually Field. Okay. Yeah, yes. okay, I know all about that. That's how Brad Williams, <laughs> we helped Brad Williams meet his wife. Comedian Brad Williams met his wife uh, on what used to be called Thrinder, but then I think they got sued, so it became Field, field. I believe. Mm-hmm. So we've had some successes. Now there's a baby run. There's a little dwarf baby running around, courtesy of us and yeah. that app. It's really unbelievable to think about it. Regardless, let's focus on your story now. The two of you were on Field, a place where people go, I would imagine, not so much for friendship. You're not looking for people to help you build IKEA furniture with. With, right? Um, you need all kinds of people. You definitely need a lot of people that want long lasting relationships like friendship. Oh, you do need people that want friendship? Yeah. That's what would happen if I went there, Allie. I'd be like thinking I was going to get laid, and they'd be like, oh, no, I was looking for a you friendship. You get friend zoned by oh, the couple. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible. Is this the first time you've gone on a date with another couple, or have you been doing this kind of lifestyle for years? Uh, we've been in it for about six years or so, six, seven years. Who pitched so. it to who first? Like I, like I would imagine the two of you were sitting there uh, having dinner one day, and then which one of you says, hey, what do you think about us uh, banging other people? How does that come up? That was Ethan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and it all happened, of course, in Vegas. Right. You know. And, no. and uh, Carla, when he first said that to you, uh, like I would imagine if I brought that up to my wife, she would uh, probably kick me right in the junk. But what, what was your reaction when you first heard that? Um, well, because of the Vegas experience, I was like, okay, we had fun over there. Why not? Mm-hmm. <laughs> why not keep it going? Yeah. yeah. So the, Okay, so it happened, and then he said, like, hey, why don't we just do this as a thing? Mm-hmm. And do you have any Pretty regrets, much. or you're just, you, you, you're, you love it? I love it. It's, yeah. I mean, she loves it. <laughs> Yeah. And do you have, people. sorry, I have so many mm-hmm. questions. Do you have ongoing relationships with couples, or is it just a one and done usually? No, we're we're very much um, building a relationship first and getting to know them first versus as, hey, doors unlocked, come in and uh, okay. let's get it on. Oh, interesting. Right? So that, that actually means yeah. that when we guess where'd you go, how far'd you go on this first date with another couple, it, maybe it wasn't as... Right, you have to see, they have to see if they're feeling each other may, first. Maybe it was not as juicy <laughs> as uh, Vanessa's leading us to. All right, we just get one question. Uh, this is where'd you go, how far'd you go? You met another couple on a dating app, a dating app that's designed for anything from friendships to more, but it's couples and other couples or threesome stuff or, or, or thruple stuff. Off, whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's go. Uh, Omar, your question yeah. for uh, Jason and Carla. 
Fake names. All right, uh, I'm going to ask them individual questions. Uh, first, I'm going to go to Carla. Carla, uh, do we uh, go uh, thong or commando? <laughs> Those are the only choices? <laughs> Carla? There's only other choices. Thong. Thong, thong. okay. Uh, Jason, uh, your question, uh, thong or commando? <laughs> So I used to wear a kilt, and I always wore commando. All right, all oh, right. There kilt we go. Guy. Kilt. You're Scottish, or you just did it for easy access? Uh, I was in a Scot. Yeah, uh, easy access. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, so I was in a Scot. Easy yeah, easy access. access. Thank you for being on. <laughs> um, Al, your questions for Carla and Jason. My... Couple, the first time we've ever done this with a couple before. A couple went on a first date with another couple. So I have a question for both of you. What was the last thing that the two of you fought about in your relationship, whether it's a big fight or a petty one? The kilt. Stop or wearing anything underwear related. Stop wearing that dumb thing. Stop, yeah, he needs to stop wearing the kilt. <laughs> what is the last uh, disagreement you guys got into? Um, uh, we, we we rarely fight. Here's the thing about being in the in the uh, lifestyle is that you're happy. Um, <laughs> we, we you communicate a lot more than normal people. Right. So we're always a hundred percent honest. You can't hide anything because if you do, then that's when you start um, like with jealousy and. And fighting, so we are very, very honest, and we're very transparent. So, uh, we probably fought a lot. <laughs> like Jason, what's the most dangerous thing you've done? Did you ever jump out of an airplane or bungee jump or? Bungee yeah, jump? yeah. I, I did jump off an airplane uh, in Hawaii off of Pearl Harbor. Yeah, um, that oh. was kind of a trip. Were you in the war? Uh, or? What side are you on? Hold on. I like this guy. All right, let's get to it now, Allie. We've learned a little bit about the couple. They are uh, they sound fun for sure. They say they say the same thing that every uh open relationship has. It's all about communication. We got great communication. This is good for the relationship. We have to get to the guesses now. Where'd they go? How far did they go on the date with the couple they met? All right. So I think that they did something interactive at a bar, like they did a trivia night or something, and they were all on a team, and that was their kind of way of bonding and learning about each other. And that went well. They were really feeling it. Then they went to another bar. They were drinking some more. They had tapas, you know, shareables, Klein, because they oh, like to share like everything. To share. Right. Then uh, they were feeling each other, but the couple brought up another couple. That oh, they had third had sex couple. With. Yes. So then they decided to meet up with them, and they had a three-couple threesome thing. All right. Allie says massive. Like an orgy all night. Appetizers and a massive orgy. That's mm-hmm. Allie's guess. Where'd they go? How far'd they go? And Jake, uh, where'd they go? How far'd they go? I think uh, when you're in this type of thing, it's really, like, intimate. So they didn't go out at all. They just had them over for dinner. And during dinner, after dinner, they played, uh, like, a board game or a drinking game. And then uh, Mm. when that was all done, they got it on. Yeah, it's an interesting theory that they would want to keep it on, like, their home turf, you know, to just in case anything happens, it's all ready to go. Mm -hmm. They've got their setup. But, Jake, when you say they got it on, they mean all of them did everyone else? It was all a giant thing? Yeah, all a giant thing. All right. uh, Omar Khan, where'd they go? How far'd they go? Um, I think they went to some sort of a lounge. They went to a lounge. Swingers love lounges. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're, they're, so they're lounging around, sipping on wine, and then the the, the the night was going really well. So then they moved over and they went to the oomts, oomts kind of club, mm. and then they popped a couple of uh, ecstasy pills, Whoa. and they were oomts, oomts. they were like dancing the night away, and they started feeling on each other up, and then they went back to Jason and Carla's place, and they went to town on each other. Everyone, everyone went to town on each other. Yeah, thongs came off. What are you thinking that maybe someone got left out, Klein? Yeah, I here's my That's why well, you keep I don't know where they yes, yes because I don't think they all I believe what maybe happened was that the two women um, did a little something with Ooh, each other. That's so hot. And that the guys, uh, you know, got a little show. That, but I'm, but where did they go on the date is what I'm trying to figure out. And maybe that was kind of the, uh, you know, they don't like to go all in on the first date. So that, that was kind of the, eh, it's a fun little show. Now let's see where it goes. I think Outback Steakhouse is what I'm thinking. <laughs> What? So I'm no thinking way, it was, this is what Klein thinks about thinking, everything. Outback Steakhouse <laughs> followed into uh, the two of them uh, decided to do a little uh, down under. Going <laughs> to sound really weird and creepy and basic. Are any of us exactly right? I think Allie's pretty close. What? Yeah. Allie's close. It's a combination. Yeah, combination. Combin- yeah. It's always a combination, but someone's got to be the closest. All right, yeah. moment of truth yeah. is here, guys. You're a couple. You met another couple. Where did you go? How far did you go? 
Uh, <laughs> okay, so we went to an Irish pub. Wow, stupid oh, guess. Why did none of us guess yeah, an Irish I don't pub? Know why no one guessed that. God, Outback's Irishy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. Go it's ahead. Yeah. Irish That's Jason, close, sure. right? So go ahead. Um, actually, it started like very, very slow night. They were very shy. We thought we were meeting with experience, um, a couple, but it was, it was very. Um, they were newbies. Uh, they were newbies. Which is fine. It was a lot of talking. Uh, we were there for about four, uh, three hours. Yeah. So we were, okay, I guess this is not going to go anywhere. So when we were about to pay for the tab. So we paid for the tab, and then eventually they said, come over our place. Like 10 minutes away. 10 minutes away. We said, sure, let's do it. Um, so we had to kind of push the conversation and push everything a little bit more. So we can get finally to the bedroom. All right. Get to the point. Get so, to the point. Yeah. Finally, we did like a little tour of the house and we made like a really long stop in the bedroom. And yes, yeah, so when we got to the bedroom, the lady said, hey, guys, go get us a drink. We come, the guys go get a drink. We go back to the room. The girls are completely uh, uh, ready. I under knew the it. Blanket. Allie, oh, I said that it. is wow. Ooh, dirty. <laughs> That's right. It is, Klein. You tell them. Because <laughs> you guys are on the same <laughs> wavelength now. <laughs> So they, they put on a show for the guys, I and it. then they say, Dude. hey, the water's warm, and I tell them, I am boned up, I am boned up. <laughs> and, yeah, you're using lines from the show, that's good. <laughs> Nothing gets women hotter than lines from this show. Okay. So, and then, and then uh, Carla says, drive through it, you can do it. And then, it's, <laughs> and then we get into bed, and we, we, we go to town for a good Two, three hours till like oh. three, four a.m. Everyone, uh, everyone with the uh, sharing taking turns, the whole thing. Oh yeah, oh yeah. There was a lot of. He's uh, so horny. Mm. A lot of liquid air everywhere. Yeah. Oh. God, I can imagine too. It's like once one person oh. finishes, and then you get to everyone else finishing, the other person's probably ready to go yeah. again, and then yeah. you just keep going round and round in circles. Oh. Are you guys drinking Gatorade or what do you guys drink? Yeah. Like? How do you Pedialyte. Keep up? It's got to be Pedialyte. Oh, yeah, they wow, have a special really? Drink. Yeah. Well, congratulations. That, that sounds, sounds like a wonderful way night. Better than, I thought we had a fun weekend. I was way off. And in case you want to know, the next night we actually went somewhere and met up with another couple and did the same thing. Oh, my God. <laughs> you must be exhausted. Jesus Christ. You guys are the real. Wrap you guys in foil like those marathon runners. <laughs> you earned it. The world famous K Rock. K Rock. Klein Alley Show. K R O Q. Klein Alley Show. Weezer tickets in five minutes, but first, your news right here on K-Rock. Grab your Adderall. It's time for ADD News. Ooh, bubble wrap. Klein, I think you know all too well what it's like to owe money to someone, especially in regards to gambling, right? Oh, yeah. It's not and fun. It's my least favorite debt of all the debts out there <laughs> is the game. I have a lot to choose from. You go credit card debt's not fun. There's a uh, loan know, debt's terrible. Loan debt, terrible. Also, even like, uh, you know, leasing a car, that's technically a debt. Mortgage debt. I've been in a lot of debts. Even just favors. I G- hate being in debt. Gambling people. debt is my least favorite debt. So uh, you won't tell me how much you've ever owed, but I would assume it has not reached seven figures. No, but it feels like it. <laughs> in- Probably five figures at one point. What? At one point. Damn. Yeah. Well, Bruno Mars, and this is not 100% verified. This is all alleged at this point. But the rumor, according to a reliable source, I don't know ever what that means, but his gambling debt is well into the eight-figure territory and that he owes MGM $50 million. And he's so far in debt that the the MGM basically owns him at this point. And this is probably why he's got a nice long Vegas residency there. And he's making money on that. They are paying him $90 million a year to do his Vegas residency. And I think it's part of a big package deal with him. Uh, he's got a gambling problem, though. Uh, I mean, nothing he's still better. making no money, but not nearly as much as he'd make if he didn't owe them $50 million. Well, of course. And, and by the way, for a casino... You know, this is why they give all the whales the good treatment there because they know that they've got the they've got the need to gamble and if they give them twenty thousand dollar a night hotel rooms, they know these guys will just stay and gamble. Stay and gamble and eventually time plus money equals <laughs> loss. Yeah. I mean that's, <laughs> that's how it works. That's basic math for you. That's right the Vegas there. math. Vegas math. Well and he was uh there's this interview that he did years ago that's now resurfacing about how he was talking about his love of poker and how Mm. 
he always loved it and then was talking about his first time gambling, a big bet. He was 19 years old and he put placed a $100 bet and he was like, his hand was shaking. Yeah, I remember and the dealer that. like oh, called yeah. him out on it. was oh. like, oh man, you're a first timer and, and told him you got to lose in order to win. Oh. And then look at him now. How you boned up hearing that story. <laughs> that is good Dude, stuff right remember there. remember when this guy called in and gave you advice, Klein? Why are you still gambling, you crazy bastard? Yeah. What are you doing, dude? Yeah. You, haven't, you haven't won in anything ever in, in a long time. Shut up. Yeah. Man, you got to stop for a second. Let it reset, Thank dude. You. I mean, Jesus. Thank you. Uh, yep. That's, how, that's the inner monologue I have in my head as, I, to place, Bruno Mars. as I place my bets, yeah. for sure. All right. Speaking of whales, we've learned uh, a lot from the Big Bear Eagles that nature can be pretty brutal at times. And the next big nature thing that everyone's been talking about that's local is the beached whale off the coast of Malibu. Now, this gray whale is a baby, but that still means that it's 13,000 pounds. And it washed up on the shore um, on Little Doom Beach. And it was alive, I believe, when it washed up, but it has since died. And now they're just letting everyone know, please don't come and take pictures of the dead whale carcass. This is audio of the whale. It's really crazy. Here we are. First bike ride. Say hi. Hi. Oh, and it was a baby. You can hear it beach right there. (laughs) Terrible. But they are, like, trying to figure out why this happens, because I guess it happens frequently where the whales just, like, beach themselves, and they're just like, I'm just going to come here to, to die or for whatever reason, but... Obviously, when you go whale watching and stuff, you're paying a lot of money just to get a glimpse of a whale. So the fact that people can just go to this beach and see a full-ass whale and take pictures and stuff, they think that there's going to be a lot of, like, weird, morbid tourism to come see this whale. And Mm. I'm also so curious as to how they, like, clean this up. Like, what are they going to do? Just let it rot? Hey, Omar, you should go out there and take your family because, remember, you went on that whale watching trip? Yeah, I got ripped off over there. You got to go see it. You didn't see any whales. I got to take my kids. Hey, here's a dead whale, kids. Hey, we got the whale. (laughs) Take some pictures. Better late than never. Get your in and out and get your whale. (laughs) And there you go. go. You're good to go. Um, At near LAX over the weekend, there was a huge traffic issue. And What idiots? I, I don't know who runs LAX, but they should all be fired. They're such idiots over there. This well, construction project, I, I know. Yeah, they the- said there, there's going to be construction, and of course they just are vague. They're like, we're experiencing increased traffic congestion, uh, congestion. so pre-book your parking and uh, use the mess. cell phone waiting lot. just chaos there. And just arrive early. And they had, like, the times of how long it was taking for people to get from one place to another. From La Tierra, like the, the exit, right to... The upper level was 52 minutes average. So it was like from the exit or just from the beginning of the upper level to Terminal 1, it was an hour. From Terminal 1 to Terminal 3, it was taking people like 45 minutes. Dude. It's it's crazy. I also love that people will still wait. They're like, man, I don't want to walk. I have been in other other cities with airports. I've never seen more people that are just lugging their, carrying their luggage like on the side of the road because it's easier than just trying to stay in a car. It's just a total chaos over there. Yeah. You know, like get rid of those giant letters. We all, we've all seen them. We get it. It's LAX. Make another lane for cars. Looks like LAX was jealous about the LA Marathon traffic. I, yeah, I know. They're like, oh, this is great. Road closure? We do that every day. <laughs> hey, guys, we're going to get you on a standby list. You will see Weezer here in LA and potentially again in Manchester, England. And we're looking for caller 20 at 800-520-1067. Flying. Flying. Alley. Alley. Show. The world famous K-Rock. K-R-O-Q. So after 9 o'clock, Monday morning here, K-Rock. Come over, perhaps. If you ran that marathon, congratulations. Hopefully you bet on Kenya. I did not. Bruno Mars did not. <laughs> so we are down even more money. But it was here we $49 are. Million at the beginning of the weekend. Yeah, and, then- and, and, and that was the extra mil. <laughs> Just like that. Yeah. This hour, what do we have for you? Well, I'll tell you what we have for you. We kick things off by getting you into that sold-out Weezer show. Just announced the, um, the entire Blue Album. 30 years. Can't believe it's been 30 years. They play that from start to finish. I got to watch them get the cobwebs off when they did that little set at the Highland Park, uh, the Lodge Room on Friday. It was great. Mm -hmm. What a show. I I saw some of the clips on K-Rock's Instagram. I posted some too, Allie. I was... Found myself making fun of everyone who had their phone out filming. Oh, uh, you were getting all posty? Five seconds later, I was like, I better capture this moment. Oh, that's Better capture it. Jake That's was like there the only well. time you would ever do that. I, I know. I don't take the phone out very often. They were good, man. They were, it was funny. I think at one point during the little preview they did to practice playing the album, Rivers was not sure if the songs were in the right order. 
Really? Oh yeah, it was funny. They don't yeah. have like a set list in front of them. They had a set had list. I was wrong. He thinks someone. He thought someone maybe oh. screwed up the set list and put the songs in the wrong order. Oh so man, he, that person should be fired. He's like, you had one job. This one dyslexic guy is like, I'll do it. But it's funny because you know that that album's been around for a while and they played a lot of those songs, of course, you know, many, many, many times, but. This whole tour is them doing that album in its entirety, start to finish. Yeah, and again, I didn't realize it was so short. 45 minutes. And awesome. It's perfect, solid, man. Perfect for me. Because some bands would play their whole album and be like three hours long. Yeah, well, this is a good one, and I was excited. I didn't realize how much I knew. J- Jake was quizzing me on the way up the mountain to see if I remembered uh, all the songs from the album. And, you know, I don't really like playing games, musical games with Jake, but or I... Or doing anything Or with doing anything Jake. with Jake. Radio Bros. I mean, I can't even. I feel uh, at, so bad at for some you. Point, but also, this was my travel with him at Aftershock, Sacramento. The whole thing was a giant headache, and then the whole thing in Vegas with the butter. Now, going you, to the restaurant and the butter. No now idea. you feel my pain, don't and you? So- he thought he lost his wallet, or at least he pretended to lose his wallet, so that I would buy all the stuff because we stopped and got food. And I said to Jake, "Can I get you a drink?" And the guy has no wallet. Because he found it, of course, later in my car, exactly where I said it was. But he thought he lost it. And it, you know what drink Jake ordered himself? A beer. A pitcher of beer. <gasps> Stop. So, we shared it. No, no. You drank the pitcher of beer, Jake. I had a glass, and you had the rest of the pitcher Jake, of beer. Are you okay? And Why are you I said, a I said to Jake, "Can I get you a drink?" And he goes, "Ah, it's like a pitcher of a Pacifico." So you drank an entire pitcher of beer to yourself after no, drinking a Klein bunch of beer a at Snow Klein Summit? I had a glass of it, and then we, we left a little bit left on the table. That's not true. For our he, homies. He drank. He actually, I had a glass, and he drank out of the pitcher. I mean, it was unbelievable. I've never seen it like oh, it. How many times did you have to stop to pee? It was, he was a real mess, this guy. We had a good time. Hey, Ma- bros. hey Michelle. Yeah. Sorry, you have to put up she with this. She feels sad. Uh, I, 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 I was supposed <laughs> to give you good news, but I know you have to deal with all this. Uh, you are caller 20. Oh, my God. Thank you guys so much. You know what? Last time I got uh, floor acoustic Christmas tickets, and I was pumping gas at Costco, and right now, guess where I am? Are you pumping, pumping gas, gas at Costco? Costco? It's unbelievable. I tell wow, you. lucky station. Let's go. Which, which yes. gas station always makes sure you win tickets? <laughs> Kara. No, no, Costco. <laughs> oh, oh, Costco. Oh, That's I, right. I heard it. Costco is the stage. I'm so excited. Uh, Don't gonna, top off now. You're going to go uh, see Weezer at the Intuit Dome, mm-hmm. their show that is happening in October. You're as good mm-hmm. as in. That's a sold-out show. And I'm letting your name down. You're the first name to go on the standby boarding list to hopefully see them again awesome. in Manchester. So be ready in about a week to be pumping gas at Costco and hoping we call you, all right? going to sleep over here. Uh, thank you for listening <laughs> to K-Rock. Greatly appreciate you. More importantly, thank you for supporting Costco at a time like this. They need it. It's good. Klein Alley Show. Klein Alley Show. K-R-O-Q. K-Rock. How would you like to become a couple hundred million dollars richer? Good opportunities now because a uh, lottery is hitting high numbers again. This seems to be like it's a thing that's been happening more and more where it gets... Crazy stupid high. high, and then people that don't normally play, don't buy mega, are like, well, everyone at work's throwing in, and like a sucker, I buy these tickets for everyone here on the team, and Omar says, I'm in, I'm in, yeah. but then he never sends me the $2 or whatever. Yeah, I'll, get you. I'll get you back. I'll get you back. <gasps> when we win, he'll get me back. The Mega Millions is up to $875 million, and Powerball's up to $645 million, but it's for the schools, Klein. It's, it's for, for the schools. schools. For the That's schools. right. Yeah. It's for the schools. Um, but I came up with a genius... Um, idea yesterday because I was going to buy our lotto tickets and I was trying to pick which liquor store, which we've talked about, right? You go to dingy ones or ones that you wouldn't normally go to. But obviously, There's, whatever people, you... People have their different theories. Or I have to go to the same one every single time. Well, um, you don't go to the one where they're already at a winner because they're not going to get another winner. Exactly. Or some people go, this is a lucky one because they've got a lot of winners. Because anytime a liquor store has a big winner, even if it's like a $10,000 winner, they do like to put that big sign up that says, California winners made here. And the liquor store themselves get money. They get a, yeah, they get a, a bonus Kickback. or whatever, a right. million dollar check that they, they get their own big check out of it, right? So they want to sell a winning ticket. So there's a liquor store within walking distance of my place. It's really the only one that's within walking distance. And we know the people because we there's the same people every single time. It's like family owned, right? They're super, super nice. We get in long conversations every time we go in there. Now we found out a couple weeks ago that they are selling the liquor store. So they're gonna be changing it over to new owners. I don't know who the new owners are, but I happened to walk into the liquor store on their last day 
of owning the liquor store. Yesterday mm. was the last day. That was the day where they were changing over the keys. So starting today, it is a new owner. I decided, you know what? I'm going to buy my lottery tickets here because wouldn't that be a perfect story that these guys, the last day that they own the liquor store, they go out winners, they get that million dollar check, and I'm a winner too. They were like, this would be the best ending to our story. So they were rooting for us when we went in there. They're we're rooting all, for you. They're yeah. rooting for, they don't root, they're not for rooting for you anymore than they're rooting for any other idiot. No, they're rooting ticket. for us because we were good customers over the years. But it doesn't matter. They, if it, Look. If they uh, get the same kickback, no matter who wins, they just want someone who bought it from themselves. They just they just want someone yeah, who bought it from them to win. Yeah, but wouldn't you want it to go to some nice, loving lesbians? No, not really. Local lesbians? They probably hate you. Probably homophobe. Probably hate you. <laughs> probably hope you don't win. I look. If I a did, homophobe won, they'd probably be like, "Great." I thought the place was shutting down. I because you said I have a I have a new technique. I'm trying to win the mega this time. Yeah, but and this every, is a beautiful story. That's a decent story but i thought like the place they finally they couldn't keep up with the rent like i thought this was the story well that is the story for them oh they couldn't keep up with the rent anymore yeah, so they, they had to get, yeah they had it. to get rid of it yeah mm. they didn't want to get rid of it they had to get rid it's of it crazy. so they're hoping... drinking you couldn't keep that liquor store they never a liquor store i feel like your wife moves to town that's and then be the... when my mom comes in, in town <laughs> yeah. with cigarettes i mean just yeah. all of that alone it's like they always win power ball every time your family <laughs> comes to town and they can jack up the price every single day we'd still pay it uh that's an interesting theory. I mean, look, I've tried my, th- you know, my theories is drive as far as you can to the outskirts. It's not going to be anywhere that looks, it's n- never say Mega Millions winner in, from Beverly Hills. It's never that. You got to go outskirts, outskirts, outskirts. Yeah, I but- used to always stop on the way to and from Vegas at the dingiest places to buy tickets, but I've never won. So clearly my plan's not working. But nobody's plan works. It's just happenstance. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know which like which place that guy uh, Edwin Castro got his from I don't know if it was like a neighborhood place for him but the other no, guy that the, just you won you do know which place he got it from he got it from the service center no I know that guy. it was the it service was like a, center but I wonder to him what it was oh right if it was just a random that was the nearby place yeah. or if he was a regular and then the other guy that just won that they just named Theodore Doris or whatever right he that was his neighborhood liquor store that was the one right down the street from his, where he lived and yeah it was a small town for us it would have been the perfect place because it was on the way it was a nowhere place on the way to somewhere. Well, the but worst, for him, that was where he lived. The worst part about all this is about three years ago, there was a huge one from the Ralphs right across the street from this radio station. And it was the it was the machine that I walked by every twice a week, and I bought lottery tickets there before. And how much did they win? $300 million. What? Yeah, at the Ralphs across the street, right across Wilshire. I didn't know it was that I know. And I, and I, and, and, now and, we're doomed. And then I go, well, that's it, because that was, that was at least a chance. Now I was actually... That's the part that's so annoying when there's a winner that's in L.A. or that's actually... Yeah, because there's L.A. and then this was, like, California. Right. These are like, you know, we have... That means that we have just as good of a chance as anyone. If the winner's coming from Wisconsin or West Virginia, it's like we have no shot. But when it's here, you go, like, man, we had a chance at it. I know. We still blew it. But then people who win here, they're like, cool, I can buy, like, one thing. I can get a rent. (laughs) Rent in Burbank for another month. In Wisconsin, you can Uh, live like a king. Allie's power of mush is so great, she closed down the entire liquor store. That is from the 818. (laughs) We take a quick break. We're back in a moment. we got more show to get to. Go nowhere. If you need a good excuse to ever take a day off of work, you're going to want to have to hear what drunk people said at our very first Klein Alley Snow Ditch Day. Because these excuses were strong. The Klein Alley Show. Klein Alley Show. 106.7 FM. K-Rock. K-Rock Klein Alley Show. At some point this year, maybe even this week, you'll need an excuse to get out of something. Usually because you either don't want to do what you had originally said you were going to do or because better plans presented themselves. So you were going to do something and then all of a sudden you got, you know, oh, someone's I have an extra ticket to go to the Lakers game. Or, you know, pretty soon baseball's starting and, you know, Omar loves the Dodgers. So maybe there's an opportunity for you to go to a Dodgers game middle of the day. And unless your boss is cool, usually you can't say, I'm going to cut out and go to a Dodger game middle of the day. You have to say, like, oh, my God. I think my appendix is exploding. Yeah, until there you are on the kiss cam on yeah, the Jumbotron then, then on TV all for all to see, so, and then you're out. I feel like we've all got our go-to excuses. We've all killed off a lot of relatives before. Oh, yeah, I feel and a lot of shame about the excuses I've made. I do, too. And, like, I remember when my grandma finally died, I had felt I felt so bad because I'd already used two. I, well, one of my grandmas I never met. She was dead before I was born. Oh, so that's a freebie. That was a freebie. Yeah, I was that's... thrilled about that. The best thing, <laughs> the best yeah, thing she's ever done for me. Was die before you. Were yeah, born. because I felt no guilt and shame in using right, that to excuse. Kill her off, right. right? 
And then I had one that was alive, but I had already killed her off years later. And then as a result, when she finally died, I was still at the same job and I had no grandmas left to, to use. So I had to actually shift to another relative to go to my actual grandma's funeral, oh my which God. is a crazy thing so to keep track. you had to kill track. off who? Did you go with an aunt or an uncle? I, or? Went, to, I went with my uncle, Leslie, who's still alive. Oh. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Now, do you think which one would I want to die or which one like, yeah, I, am I, I closest with? I felt which one would I be able to feel. Which one did I go on a weird cruise with? Wait, who filmed me the whole wait, time? Would I I feel, which one would I feel less weird about killing off? But also, if there's any follow-ups, I could I could at least provide some sure. color commentary. Now, the reality is, for this ditch day thing we did on Friday at Snow Summit, everyone pretty much had to come up with an excuse to leave work because very few people told the truth and said I won tickets on the radio to go skiing and snowboarding for the day. So as a result, we wanted to get a sense of what were some of the excuses people had used to be there. And, and uh, I, they were drunk, so they were very honest with their excuses. Yeah, and I, I'm interested because some people won uh, and had about a week or so to come up with an excuse or to plant the seed of an excuse, but other people got it literally an hour before we left. Yeah. And, so they had to do something really last minute. And we, we let you hear these because you will need need an excuse and one of these may work for you so you're going to want to get out of work for something spring break related or as i said a game you're going to have an opportunity to use an excuse maybe you use these ones because these ones apparently all worked for people that joined us on our friday my tube fell out too and i, I needed but i needed to go to mexico because it takes two days to take a cast and then i put it in tomorrow so that guy had dental surgery in Mexico, and that's what he used for his excuse to miss work. And the boss said, all right, good luck with the tooth. And, <laughs> and ideally, when you go back to work and you have a, your tooth is still there, you just tell them it's a new tooth and they won't know. They have no but, idea. Then there was this guy. Uh, my grandma died, but not uh, today, but set close to today. What's your name? So that person used, close to today. used, the, used the grandma death one. And I spoke to that person, um, and they were very nice, and they explained that they their grandma died a few weeks ago but now was the funeral N well or they're, now they're, they're finally it's finally hitting they're you actual, you're grieving. yeah they're grieving the <laughs> grieving process had begun they had to grieve so they took a day i just realized my grandma died <laughs> three weeks ago <laughs> and now I'm <laughs> what's your name my name melissa melissa from where fullerton what'd you say to get out of work today um, so my sister's pregnant so i let them know that my sister's getting induced today Oh, great. So that's a good one. Pregnancy because stuff's always easy. It's, it's kind of great. You either go with end of life or beginning of life mm -hmm. are two great excuses. Need to be there. My sister's getting induced. And is she getting induced today? No, tomorrow. But, you know, you don't feel like it's a total lie, even though it was, if it's close by. Even the grandma death thing, he goes, she did actually die recently. So people feel better about using that as an excuse. If there's a, an excuse within six months of your... Actual yeah. excuse, I feel like it's okay to use So this it. woman didn't need to take Friday off because her sister was being induced on Saturday. But she goes, might as well work it in so I can join, you know. And you know on day. Saturday she was hungover and didn't even right. go see She probably sister. missed the sister. And is she getting induced today? No, tomorrow. Close enough. Totally close enough. <laughs> totally. Did you ditch anything to be here? Yes. What'd you ditch? Work. Oh, the ditch anything. What was your excuse? What was my excuse? Yeah. yeah what was your excuse? <laughs> that I had to take my kid to a, a doctor's appointment. That's uh, another big one. Yeah, I would be there if I could, but my kid's got, uh, you know, whatever. Sorry. Leprosy. Can't be, can't be there today. So it was a, a, a whole collection of illnesses, ailments, fake deaths, etc. You know, I didn't hear the most popular excuse. Which one was that? The Big D. The Big D. Diarrhea. Oh, diarrhea. Yeah. That's, diarrhea works every yeah, single no one, time. No one admitted it, but I'm sure some people did use diarrhea as the big D. And then there was just other people that were just so thrilled that they were able to gather. It was a nice opportunity for us to get together with some listeners. Oh, my God. Klein, Allie, Jake, Johnny, Vanessa. It was a privilege and an honor to be able to go to the snow ditch day up there. I had such a great time. I got to give special super duper thanks to Giovanni who volunteered out of his own idea to pick me up and take me up there. I mean, this was Blind Charlie, who wasn't going to come because he said blind people in mountains just don't mix. <laughs> and uh, he, was, he didn't want to waste lift tickets because he can't ski or snowboard. And uh, he, some listener tracked him down, found him. Giovanni picked him up. They drove up there together. I know, and Blind Charlie brought us all gifts. It was really he gave nice. Me Ritz crackers. Yeah, I don't think he knew what he gave me because I think he was just randomly grabbing stuff and he's blind. But I just said thank you anyway. 
<laughs> he said, I think you'd really like this. And, uh, I you're think like, was, you're right. I you're, love it. I love it. Thanks, Charlie. <laughs> and everybody that was there, all the Kerak listeners, oh, it was so much fun just being around people that were having a good time and letting loose. It was fantastic. I can't thank you guys enough. It was amazing. I hope everybody had as much fun as I did. Thank you, everybody. You're the best. That was Blind Charlie. Blind Charlie is unfortunately still sitting up there on top of the mountain. <laughs> Giovanni we, wasn't we, offering we had, a round trip. Yeah, we, we all left. <laughs> he still thinks the party's going on. But it was a good time. And thanks for everyone for coming. And uh, we'll get the video recap up very shortly at Klein Alley Show on the social. World famous K Rock. Klein Alley Show. Jeff, 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 Jeff. Klein Alley Show. K Rock. Usually we get to make all the big announcements. We got to make one earlier this morning, let you know all about Weezer and Manchester. It is another destination. Also got to give away that trip to go see Green Day in Dublin, Ireland. But uh, Nicole has an opportunity to make a big announcement at noon today, just in time for the 90s at noon with Nicole Alvarez right here on K-Rock. A big announcement. Prepare to be surprised. So I hope you're listening at noon, and then Nicole will give you some information that you're going to want to know, and then you will act accordingly. But once again, we will put out all the information, details of K-Rock. If you're not already following along on the socials, big announcement coming on K-Rock at noon with Nicole Alvarez. All right, takeaways from today's show. What do we got? All right, two, one, three. My takeaway is oh, oh what's that? Right, there you go. That's the one. Two, one, three. My takeaway is thong or commando. It's a good takeaway. It's the only options. <laughs> Nine, one, six. My takeaway is Klein's car has new Jake smell. God, it's the yeah, worst. Yeah, radio bros. First of all, I went from new car smell to old Jake smell is what it went to, oh. and it's a terrible. Golly, go put your nose in my car after the show nope, and take a smell. Not gonna do it. This thing smelled brand new as of Friday. Up until about 10.30 a.m. And it smelled semi-new. And then Jake got in it, and just like that, gone. So gross. Five, six, two, my takeaway is go to the Outback if you want to go down under with another couple. That's right. And five, six, two, my takeaway is if you get in enough debt in Vegas, they own you. All you got to do is do a residency. When you lose a lot in Vegas, just tell them, that's fine. I'll do a residency. <laughs> it's what Bruno Mars did. It's working out great. Every drunk dude in Vegas. Does a residency <laughs> to pay off their debt. I love that idea. That's I would go great. to that show. That would be way more fun than the Blue Man Group. It really <laughs> The Broke Man Group? I can't believe bunch of guys standing the Blue around. Man Group is still a thing. Even. That, that are just there because they've lost all their money and they have to They're perform like every trying night. To juggle. God damn, that'd be so fun to watch. <laughs> uh, your takeaway from today's show, Omar Khan. Uh, my takeaway is that diarrhea is the big D. The big D is diarrhea. Never forget it. Use the big D. Jake, you got a uh, takeaway? Yeah, it takes a special man and special goggles to get rid of bees. That's right. <laughs> oh, more is that special. You guys see the video. A lot, a lot of stuff going up on the socials today if you're not already following along. But that video attack, uh, the bee attack that Omar took down, man, you got to check that out. It's insane. It's wild. Uh, and someone wanted to remind us, Omar, that bees do communicate through dance. Oh, my God. That's right. Was it Dan? Dan from Mission VA. I wanted to text that into us. Uh, have a great rest of your day. We'll do it tomorrow. Try to do it better. Remember, noon today, announcement with Nicole you're going to want to hear. And then whatever she announces, I'm sure we'll reward you with something to do with that announcement tomorrow morning. There. That's about as cryptic as I can speak wow. without giving it away. Very cryptic. I almost said what it was about four times. Ah. I just want to turn my mic <laughs> so off. Just stop. I, I got to stop, stop talking. Uh, have a great rest of your day. That's it. Omar Khan, the B-Man, yep. a very special man will take us out. They, 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 they feel that, uh, um, uh, that you know, they that they feel that, uh, that, um... Klein, the world, Alley, Famous. show. K-Rock, Klein, Alley, show. Morning, Don K-Rock.